Hi friends, we can see one of the important areas that is Ikshwaku dynasty. Ikshwaku, Amsham on Japesi and Tunam. Ikshwakus. After the decline of Shatavahanas, these Ikshwakus came to power. Ikshwaku lo Rajani Peripala Chisnit Lagatilisundi. Shatavahanula Patanantaram, Rajapala Chisna Walu Ikshwaku. These Ikshwakus, they were also called Vijayapurishas. Because Vijayapuri became the capital, that's why they are called Vijayapurishas. Vijayapurishulu Nikuda. Anaru. Villa Kalim Lo, Sri Parvatam that was called, okay, Sri Parvatam and Japesi and Yanam. So that developed well. Nagarjuna Konda and Japesanam, that advanced well. Sri Parvatam, that's why they were also called Sri Parvatiyas and Ikuda Naru. So Nagarjuna Konda gets Sri Parvatamani Peru. In Nagarjuna Konda goes Sri Parvatamani and Napudu, Marivilanu, Sri Parvatiyas and Ikuda Naru. Aderekanga Marivilanu, Ikshwakus and Ikuda. Anyhow, capital is Vijayapuri. The Prakrit language and Sanskrit language both advanced in the period of this Ikshwaku dynasty. So, according to inscriptions, there are only four rulers. According to inscriptions, there are only four rulers. According to inscriptions, if you see, four rulers are there in this Ikshwaku dynasty. In the Mandi Palakul Narante, four rulers are in Jeptundi. Alaka Kundamari, according to Puranas, if you see, seven rulers are there like that. It is said, according to, so in this Ikshwakus, according to inscriptions, according to inscriptions, according to inscriptions, there are so there is there are four rulers. There are four rulers in Japesi and Nam. Yandamandi Palakuluna and I Nalgur Palakuluna Tagatelisundi. So first one was his tea putra Sri Shantamula. First one marriages net like they was his tea putra. Was his tea putra. Was his tea putra Sri Shantamula. Sri Shanta. Mula and Japesi and Tunam. He was the first one. Otherwise, he was called Shanta Mula 1. Itadi Kemani and Naru, Shanta Mula 1 Nani, Pilchinet Lagatil Sundi. Or he was called Shanta Mula 1 Nani and Nam. He was called Shanta Mula 1 Nani. Ledak Shanta Mulani, Ala Purdan Yirindi. Second one was Veera Purusha Dutta. Veera Purusha. So this Veera Purusha Dutta. He was the second one in this dynasty. Third one, Maritus Nidlaite. So, this Yehuvala Shantamula. Yehuvala. Yehuvala Shantamula. Yehuvala Shantamula. He was the third ruler, according to inscriptions. And fourth one, Rudra Purusha Dutta. So, like that. So, four rulers, they administered this one. Purusha Dutta. Rudra Purusha Dutta Nethanu Palan Chase Nethlagathis. Got idea? According to inscription. Manam inscription Sadharanga Matrame, Nalguru Palakal Matrame, Chodamani Jirkindi. Purana Lemo, enemy Yedumundi, Purana said that. So there are eight, uh, seven rulers. Purana Prakarangamari, seven rulers, and now we are not going to see. So uh, there is the seven rulers. We are going to see only four rulers because they are only important. Gurthundamari, so like that, summary to snit like that. Then, who is the founder of, so there is especially the Ikshwaku dynasty in airport is now. Motamundi Vad Vasis Kitra Pranasri Shantamari Mula seven rulers Leda Anike Shanta Muludu Ani Perunatlaka Tilisundi Shanta Mula one Ani Anam. He was also called Shanta Mula one. He was called Shanta Mula one. Shanta Mula. Okay, you can write M O R M U. Shanta Mula one and Japesi Perkunatlaka Tilisundi. Symbol of this one lion became the symbol. Okay, so there is Harati Putra Sani Leda Sri Parvati Asana. So just now we have seen Sri Parvatam that advanced well. Nagarjuna Konda is called Sri Parvatam. This Nagarjuna Konda that was called. This Nagarjuna Konda. Nagarjuna Konda that was called Sri Parvatam. That's why they are called Sri Parvati Asani. Perkunatlaga Telisundi. This Sri Parvatam and Nagarjuna Konda. 
మరి యజ్ఞశ్రీ శాతకర్ణి కాలంలో కానీ చూసినట్లయితే నాగార్జున కొండలోనే ఈ ఆచార్య నాగార్జునుడి కోసం ఆశ్రమాన్ని ఏర్పాటు చేశాడన్నాం ఏదది సో దేస్ పారావత్ ఆశ్రమం దట్ వాజ్ ఎస్టాబ్లిష్ లైక్ దాట్ ఇట్ వాజ్ సాడ్ ఎనీ హావ్ ఇన్ ద పీరియడ్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ ఎక్స్వాకోస్ ఎక్స్వాకుల కాలంలో మరి చూసినట్లయితే లయన్ బిగేమ్ దర్ సింపల్ ద లాంగ్వేజెస్ దే కంటిన్యూడ్ సేమ్ సాన్స్క్రిట్ అండ్ సో అట్ ద సేమ్ టైమ్ ప్రోక్రిత్ లాంగ్వేజెస్ దే కంటిన్యూడ్ సో బేసికలీ క్యాపిటల్ ఈజ్ విజయపురి అని చెప్పేసి అంటున్నాం దాట్స్ వై ఓన్లీ దే ఆర్ ఆల్సో కాల్ విజయపురి షాస్ అని కూడా పిలిచారు విజయపురి బిగేమ్ ద క్యాపిటల్ దాట్స్ వై దే ఆర్ కాల్ విజయపురి షాస్ ఓకే సో దేస్ వీళ్ళకు మరి ఏమేమి పేర్లు ఉన్నాయి వాట్ ఆర్ ద నేమ్స్ ఫర్ దిస్ ఇక్ష్వాకూస్ ఈ ఇక్ష్వాకూస్ మరి చూసినట్లయితే ఇక్ష్వాకూస్ అని అన్నాం ఈ ఇక్ష్వాకూస్కు ఏమేం పేర్లు ఉన్నాయి అన్నట్లయితే విజయపురి బిగేమ్ ద క్యాపిటల్ దట్స్ బై దే ఆర్ కాల్డ్ విజయపురి షాస్ సో దీస్ పీపుల్ దే ఆర్ కాల్డ్ విజయ పురి షాస్ అని అన్నాం విజయ పురి షాస్ ఓకే పురి షాస్ అని చెప్పేసి పేరు ఉన్నట్లుగా తెలుస్తుంది నాగార్జున కొండ దట్ వాస్ కాల్డ్ శ్రీ పర్వతం హెన్స్ ద వర్ కాల్డ్ శ్రీ పర్వతీయాస్ ద వర్ కాల్డ్ శ్రీ పర్వతీయాస్ అని కూడా పేర్కొన్నట్లుగా తెలుస్తుంది శ్రీ పర్వతం ఉంది కాబట్టి శ్రీ పర్వతీయాస్ అని లేదా ఇక్ష్వాకూస్ అని ఈ పేర్లన్నీ కూడా వీళ్లకు ఉన్నట్లుగా తెలుస్తుంది అని చెప్పేసి ఉన్నాం దాట్స్ వన్ ఆఫ్ ద ఇంపార్టెంట్ పాయింట్స్ సో లయన్ బికేమ్ ద సింబల్ ఆఫ్ దీస్ పీపుల్ లయన్ అఫీషియల్ లాంగ్వేజ్ ఆఫ్ దీస్ పీపుల్ దట్ ఈస్ ప్రోక్రిత్ సాన్స్క్రిట్ ఆల్సో ఎగ్జిస్టెడ్ ఇన్ దిస్ పీరియడ్ లాంగ్వేజ్ మరి చూస్ లాంగ్వేజ్ ప్రోక్రిత్ లాంగ్వేజ్ దట్ కంటిన్యూ అండ్ సాన్స్క్రిట్ ఆల్సో ఎగ్జిస్టెడ్ లైక్ దాట్ ఇట్ వాస్ సెడ్ వీళ్ళ కాలంలో సాంస్కృత భాష కూడా ఉన్నట్లుగా తెలుస్తుంది అన్నాం ప్రోక్రిత్ ఉంది అండ్ సాన్స్క్రిట్ ఆల్సో కంటిన్యూడ్ ఇన్ ద పీరియడ్ ఆఫ్ దీస్ పీపుల్ సాన్స్క్రిట్ కూడా కంటిన్యూ అన్నట్లుగా తెలుస్తుంది ఇలా మరి ఆల్ దీస్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ పాయింట్స్ టు రిమెంబర్ రిలేటెడ్ విత్ దిస్ సో ఇక్ష్వాకూస్ దెన్ వీ హ్యావ్ టు సీ వాట్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ సోర్సెస్ దే ఆర్ దే టు నో ద హిస్టరీ ఆఫ్ సో దీస్ పీపుల్ దట్ ఈస్ ఆల్సో ఇంపార్టెంట్ కమింగ్ టు లిజియన్ ఆల్రెడీ సో దే ఇస్ వైష్ణవిజం ఉంది బుద్ధిజం ఉంది బికాస్ సో బుద్ధిజం మరి చూసినట్లయితే ద పీరియడ్ ఆఫ్ దీస్ వన్ ఇక్ష్వాకూస్ పీరియడ్ ఈస్ కాల్డ్ గోల్డెన్ ఏజ్ ఫర్ బుద్ధిజం వీర పురుష దత్తాస్ పీరియడ్ ఈస్ కాల్డ్ వీర పురుష దత్తాస్ పీరియడ్ ఈస్ కాల్డ్ గోల్డెన్ ఏజ్ ఏమని అన్నారంటే గోల్డెన్ ఏజ్ ఫర్ బుద్ధిజం అని చెప్పేసి పేర్కొనడం అనేది జరిగింది అని అన్నాం ఇక సో వీళ్ళ గురించి తెలియజేయడానికి ఉన్నటువంటి ఆధారాలు ఏంటి వాట్ ఆర్ ద సోర్సెస్ టు నో ద హిస్టరీ ఆఫ్ దీస్ పీపుల్ సోర్సెస్ ఏమున్నాయని చెప్పి చూసినట్లయితే ఎపిగ్రఫ్ ఎపిగ్రాఫ్స్ అన్నాం సో అంటే నాట్ ఓన్లీ దిస్ వన్ సో వాట్ ఇన్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్స్ దే స్పోక్ అబౌట్ దీస్ పీపుల్ వాట్ ఆర్ ద ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్స్ ఇఫ్ యూ సీ సోర్సెస్ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్స్ స్టడీ ఆఫ్ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్స్ ఈజ్ కాల్డ్ స్టడీ ఆఫ్ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్స్ ఈజ్ కాల్డ్ ఎపిగ్రఫీ ఓకే స్టడీ ఆఫ్ దిస్ స్టడీ ఆఫ్ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్స్ స్టడీ ఆఫ్ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్స్ is called is called epigraphy enemani annam epigraphy ani cheppesi annam mari so number of inscriptions were given by so these people what are the important inscriptions they are giving good account about so these people okay what important inscriptions they are there nagarjuna konda okay so there is ramiredi palli nagarjuna konda inscription నాగార్జున కొండ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ నాగార్జున కొండ అమరావతి ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ అమరావతి ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ రామిరెడ్డిపల్లి ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ రామిరెడ్డిపల్లి రామిరెడ్డిపల్లి ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ అల్లూరు అల్లూరు ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ ఉప్పగొండూరు ఉప్ ఉప్పగొండూరు ఉప్పగొండూరు ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ ఓకే సో దాచేపల్లి ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ దాచేపల్లి ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ దాచేపల్లి ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ కేశానపల్లి ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ కేశానపల్లి కేశానపల్లి ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ ఎట్సెట్రా దే ఆర్ ఆల్ గివింగ్ గుడ్ అకౌంట్ అబౌట్ సో దీస్ పీపుల్ నాగార్జున కొండ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ 
అమరావతి ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ రామిరెడ్డిపల్లి అల్లూరు ఉప్పగొండూరు దాచేపల్లి కేశానపల్లి సో రెంటాల ఓకే రెంటాల ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ రెంటాల ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ సో ఎట్సెట్రా దేర్ ఆల్ గివింగ్ గుడ్ అకౌంట్ అబౌట్ సో గివింగ్ గుడ్ అకౌంట్ అబౌట్ గివింగ్ గుడ్ అకౌంట్ గివింగ్ గుడ్ అకౌంట్ అబౌట్ దిస్ ఇక్ష్వాకుస్ ఇక్ష్వాకుస్ గట్ ఐడియా లైక్ దాట్ నంబర్ ఆఫ్ సోర్సెస్ దే ఆర్ దేర్ లైక్ దాట్ వీ కెన్ సీ ఇన్ ద పీరియడ్ ఆఫ్ దీస్ పీపుల్ ఎస్పెషలీ సో మెనీ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్స్ దే ఆర్ దేర్ వాట్ ఆర్ దీస్ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్స్ యూ సీ వన్స్ అగైన్ సో దీస్ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్స్ ఇఫ్ యూ సీ ద స్టడీ ఆఫ్ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్స్ దట్ ఈస్ కాల్డ్ ఎపిగ్రఫీ యూ నో వాల్ ఎపిగ్రఫీ ఓకే సో ఎపిగ్రఫీ మీన్స్ స్టడీ ఆఫ్ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్స్ వాట్ ఆర్ ద ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్స్ సో సమ్ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్స్ ఇఫ్ యూ సీ సమ్ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్స్ సమ్ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్స్ సమ్ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్స్ ఇఫ్ యూ సీ సో హియర్ నాగార్జున కొండ అమరావతి రామిరెడ్డిపల్లి అల్లూరు ఉప్పగొండూరు ఓకే ఉప్పగొండూరు ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ దాచేపల్లి ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ కేశానపల్లి రెంట్ ఆల్ ఆ లైక్ దాట్ నంబర్ ఆఫ్ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్స్ సో దే ఆర్ దేర్ లైక్ దాట్ ఇట్ వాస్ సాడ్ సో ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్స్ దే ఆర్ సో ఎస్పెషలీ దే ఆర్ గివింగ్ గుడ్ అకౌంట్ అబౌట్ సో దీస్ పీపుల్ దెన్ అమరావతి ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ దట్ ఈస్ ఆల్సో వన్ ఆఫ్ ద ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్స్ లైక్ దాట్ సో దే ఇస్ ఎస్పెషలీ సో గ్రీన్ స్టోన్ మాంధాత స్కల్ప్చర్ సో దే ఆర్ వన్ ఆఫ్ ద ఇంపార్టెంట్ స్కల్ప్చర్స్ లైక్ దాట్ సో ఇట్ వాస్ సాడ్ మాంధాత స్టాచ్యూ సెడ్ అబౌట్ వాట్ దాట్ యూ సీ ఓకే మాంధాత స్టాచ్యూ దిస్ మాంధాత స్టాచ్యూ వాస్ ఫౌండ్ దాట్ స్టాచ్యూ వాస్ ఫౌండ్ దాట్ జగ్గయ్యపేట సో మాంధాత స్టాచ్యూ వాస్ సో ఫౌండ్ దాట్ సో దిస్ మాంధాత స్టాచ్యూ వాస్ ఫౌండ్ ఓకే మాంధాత వీ ఆర్ కాలింగ్ దిస్ మాంధాత స్టాచ్యూ ఫౌండ్ దాట్ జగ్గయ్యపేట 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 లైక్ దాట్ ఇట్ వాస్ ఫౌండ్ దాట్ జగ్గయ్యపేట so that was the statue of veera purushadatta he was the greatest ruler among all the rulers of ikshvakus he was the greatest ruler among all the rulers of ikshvakus like that it was said so it was the statue of it was the statue of it was the statue of veera purushadatta veera purusha datta Veera Purusha Datta was the greatest ruler in this dynasty. His period is called Golden Age. The period of Veera Purusha Datta that was called Golden Age. He was also called Madari Putra. Madari was mother. Vasishti Putra Sri Shantamula was father. So okay, like that. So Veera Purusha Datta, it was the statue of Veera Purusha Datta, we can say. It said about the qualities of an emperor. The statue, Mandata statue. the statue said about the qualities of an emperor how the qualities must be like that beautifully that was carved okay so the statue said about the statue said about the qualities of said about the qualities of an emperor qualities qualities of an emperor qualities of an emperor was said in that okay like that mandata statue that is one of the important one which belong to so this veera purusha datta that you have to so this uh, you have to know so veera purusha datta was the greatest ruler and ruddha purusha datta was the last ruler according to inscriptions according to inscriptions ruddha purusha datta he was the last ruler like that it was said got idea so like this you have to remember all these important points in connection with this one ikshvakus okay what are the important sources inscriptions you know what important inscriptions they are there so important inscriptions if you see samaravati nagarjuna konda etc so puranas epigraphs puranas literary sources they are there in connection with this ikshvaku dynasty like that okay what ep- epigraphic evidences they are there puranas you know well literary evidences they are also there 
epigraphic uh, these sources indicates so these inscriptions just now only we have seen all these important inscriptions amaravati inscription nagarjuna konda jagayapeta rameridipalli alluru uppagunduru dachepalli keshanapalli like that many puranas you know well matsya purana so gives good account about this one vishnu purana vayu purana matsya purana like that this puranas they are also ashtadasha puranas we are calling ashta indicates 8 dasha indicates 10 ashtadasha puranas all did not say something about this one only few puranas spoke about ekshvakus in ashtadasha puranas puranas are ashtadasha ashtadasha we are calling ashta indicates 8 dasha indicates 10 18 puranas some puranas said about the ekshvakus then literary evidences they are also there to this ekshvaku dynasty where did they come from whether they are the original inhabitants of andhra desh otherwise did they come from different places so like that that is also one of the important things you have to so no so then so their place of origin that we have to as see then which clan they belong so the greatest ruler was veera purushottam was his putra shri shantamula he was the first ruler that we can say yehula shantamula he was the third ruler rudra purushottam he was the last ruler i told you so according to inscriptions there are four rulers already we wrote first one was his putra shri shantamula he was the first ruler in that dynasty vasishti putra shri shantamula he was also called shantamula 1 shantamula 1 second one veera purushottam veera purushottam was the greatest ruler his period is called golden age veera purushottam was also called south indian ashoka veera purushottam was called how he was called south indian south indian ashoka he was called south indian ashoka right so this was his tripatra shri shantamula he was the first one in this dynasty second one is veera purushottam third one ehuvala shantamula not ehuvala ehuvala this ehuvala shantamula shantamula okay rudra purushottam was the last ruler in that dynasty rudra purushottam okay so there is sir rudra purushottam was the last ruler so like that only there are four rulers in this dynasty like that we have so you know well ekshvaku dynasty sought the decline of shatavahana was only they came to power you know well shatavahana's last ruler pulemavi 3 after the decline of that empire ekshvaku dynasty came to power you know well vijayapuri became the capital that's why they were called vijayapuri shas vijayapuri otherwise they were also called sri parvati was right lion became the symbol of these people lion that became the symbol the first ruler in this dynasty was his tri putra sri shantamula according to matsya purana it is said that matsya purana says there are seven rulers in this dynasty but inscription said that only four rulers are there in this ekshvaku dynasty different opinions are there whether the localites of fandra or did they come from different place so different opinions they are there okay what opinions are there regarding the coming of so or ekshvakus that you have to say so they people administered krishna godavari river region they people administered krishna godavari river region that was administered by the ekshvakus they administered they administered they administered in the krishna godavari region krishna godavari river region godavari river region krishna godavari river regions were administered by so these people like that it was said okay they administered so there is regions especially so krishna godavari river regions were administered by these people like that it was said different opinions are they regulated by this ekshvaku dynasty ekshvaku la gurinchi bhinnamainaatvanti abhiprayalu unnai శ్రీరాముని వంశానికి చెందిన వాళ్ళని శ్రీరాముడు ఇక్ష్వాకుని వంశానికి చెందిన వాళ్ళని అలా కథనం కూడా ఉంది లేదా ఇక్షు అంటే చెరకు కూడా అని దాన్ని అధికార చిహ్నంగా కొంతకాలం కలిగి ఉన్నారని అందువల్ల ఇక్ష్వాకు అని పేరు వచ్చిందనే వాదన కూడా మనకు కనిపిస్తుంది 
Okay. Ikshwaku, Ikshu means sugar cane. That became the symbol of these people. That's why they are called Ikshwakus like that. It was said. Ikshu indicates. Ikshu indicates sugar cane. Sugar cane. Ikshu indicates what? Sugar cane. That's why. So they became the symbol in the beginning. So that's why they were called. They were called Ikshwakus. But lion that was the symbol of. So this one. Lion was the symbol of this Ikshwaku dynasty. According to Purana, so many rulers, seven rulers are there according to Matsya Purana. But according to inscriptions, there are only four rulers in this dynasty. Okay. Then, so this Buddha Charitra, Ashwagosha wrote Buddha Charitra. Buddha Charitra also said about these people. Ashwagosha so was the deputy in fourth Buddhist council. So he wrote the book. So there is Buddha Charitra. Buddha Charitra also said about these people. Buddha Charitra. Ashwagosha wrote the book. Ashwagosha wrote the book. Buddha Charitra. Buddha Charitra. This Buddha Charitra also said about. So these Ikshwakus like that it is said. Coming to their coming to. So they said. Uh, especially whether they belong to Andhra or they come from. So different places, different opinions are there. What opinions are there related with them? That we have to see. Okay, Robson Buller said that they belong to North India, Lord Sri Rama's dynasty. They belong to North India, Lord Sri Rama belonged to Ikshwaku dynasty. They people came from North India like that. It was said by Robson and Buller. Vogel said that they people belong to Carnatic region. Gopalachari said that they people belong to Tamil Nadu. And at the same time, Caldwell said that they are the original inhabitants of Andhra only. Right? So like the different opinions are there related with these people like that we can say. Okay. Related with this one. Robson and Buller. Robson and Buller. They said that Ikshwakus belong to North India. This Ikshwakus belongs to North India, Lord Sri Rama's dynasty, North India, and Lord Sri Rama's dynasty, and Lord Sri Rama's dynasty, Lord Sri Rama's dynasty, like that. It was said by whom in the sense? It was said by Robson and Bulev. So Robson and Bulev. Vogel said that. So this Vogel said that. They people belongs to Karnataka. So the Sikshwakus belongs to Karnataka. Original inhabitants of Karnataka migrated to this Andhra region like that. It was said by whom in the sense it was said by Vogel. Vogel commented like that. Got idea? So then Gopalachari said that they people belong to Tamil Nadu. So there is because some places which are related with them may belong to these people like that it was estimated by Gopalachari. Gopalachari said so they people belong to Ikshwakus belong to so there is Tamil Nadu. So there is Gopalachari said that Gopalachari according to Gopalachari they people belongs to Tamil Nadu. They people belongs to Tamil Nadu. But Caldwell he said that they are the original inhabitants of Andhra. Caldwell. Caldwell said that they are the original inhabitants of. They are the original inhabitants of. They are the original inhabitants of. Inhabitants of Andhra. Krishna Godavari River region. That was the place of the Sikshwakus like that. It was said by Caldwell. So, Gopalachari said that they people belong to this one. But anyhow, so Guntur, Prakasham, Nellur, some parts of Kadapa region, all these were administered by. So, this Ikshwakus like that, it was said. Okay. They administered all these regions. So, Guntur region, Prakasham region. Okay. So, there is Prakasham region, Nellur region, Kadapa region, so etc. Kadapa, etc. regions, etc. They were administered by this Ikshwakus like that it was said. Because this Vijapuri comes there in Guntur district only in Agarjana Konda, you know well. 
So that's why they are called Sri Parvatiyas. Nagarjuna Kunda was called Sri Parvatam. That's why they are called Sri Parvatiyas. Vilani Muni Anaru, Sri Parvatamani Anna. Nagarjuna Kunda was Sri Parvatamani Peru Kabati. Sri Parvatamani Rangalu, Abridis Adinchadam Vella. Vilaku Sri Parvati Yulu Ani Peru. Adi Vidanga, Sri Ramani Umshaniki Jendravarani, Ikshwakulu Ani, Allah Unnautla, the Buddha Telisundi. Okay. Lay the Vijapurni Kendranga Chesconi, Paripalin Chadamella, they were called Vijaya Purishas. So different names are there to these people, so that you have to remember. Okay, then. According to Matsapurana said that seven rulers are there, but according to inscriptions, Alluru, Upagunduru, Dajapalli, so in the last class I told you, Dajapalli, Ramiridipalli, so all these inscriptions, there is some inscription said about there are only four rulers in this dynasty. Right? So like that we have seen uh, some important points in this. Okay, then. So in there especially Ikshwakus. So these Ikshwakus, they divided the kingdom into states like that, uh, directly entered the administration prior to that. So we have to see the rulers. Who are the rulers? First ruler in this dynasty. First ruler. Vasisti Putra Sri Shantamula. Vasisti Putra. Who was the first ruler in this dynasty? Vasisti Putra Sri Shantamula. Otherwise, he was also called Shantamula 1. Vasisti Putra Sri Shantamula. Shanta. Mula, like that it was said. Vasisti Putra Sri Shantamula. Otherwise, he was also called Shantamula 1. Or he was called, how in the sense? He was called Shantamula 1. Shantamula 1. Time period is not necessary because inscription said some period, Purana said some other period. That's why time period not necessary. Okay, not that much importance here. Anyhow, Shantamula 1 came to power. He was the first ruler in this dynasty who established this Ikshwaku Empire. Ikshwaku Empire that was started by this Shantamula 1 only. So this empire was started by empire was started by him. Empire was started by him. So Ikshwaku empire that was started by Shantamula, one like that it was said. Already you know that Vijayapuri became the capital. Vijayapuri became the capital. That's why they are called Vijayapurishas. That's why they are called how? Vijayapurishas like that it was said. Okay, Nagarjuna Kunda also called Sri Parvatam, that's why they are also called Sri Parvatiyas. Vijayapurishas, Sri Parvatiyas names, they are also there. So anyhow, first ruler in this dynasty was Sri Putra Sri Shantamula. He was also called Shantamula I. He got the title Sata Sahasra Halaka and he was called Mahadanapati. What titles are there to this Shantamula I? The Shantamula one got the titles. Shantamula one. The Shantamula one. He got the titles. What titles are there to this one? He was called Sata Sahasra. Sata Sahasra. Sata Sahasra Halaka. Sata Sahasra Halaka. That's the title of this one. And he was also called Mahadanapati. Sata Sahasra Halaka means Crores together, okay. So crores together, gold coins, lakhs together, plows, plows for the purpose of agriculture. They are donated by this one. That's why it was called Sata Sahasra, one crore. Sata Sahasra Halaka, crores together, gold coins and plows, gold coins. Crores together, gold coins and plows. Plows were given to farmers. So that's why, so they were given to farmers, given to farmers, plows were given to farmers, that's why, so they was, uh, were given to farmers, given to farmers, since he was called Satasahasra Halaka, and he was also called Mahadanapati, this is the first title, second title if you see, he was also called Maha. Dhanapati. Whoever may come and request something, use it to donate. So like that he was called Mahadhanapati. That's also the title of this one. He 
It was called Shatha Sahasra Halaka, this one title. Mahadhanapati, this one of the titles that you have to remember. He was a good administrator. He was a good administrator and a devotee of, uh, so this Kartikeya or Kumara Swami, like that it was said. He was the devotee of Mahasena Kartikeya. He was the devotee of, okay, he was the devotee of Mahasena Kartikeya. He was the devotee of, he was the devotee of Mahasena Kartikeya. Mahasena Kartikeya. In the period of this one, what happened? So this Vijayapuri became the capital. Sanskrit and Prakrit languages, the advanced. So you know well. Like that things went on well in the period. Madari was a wife. Madari, his wife's name was. Shantamula once wife was. His wife was Madari. Madari was the wife of this one. And Vasisthi Putra Shantamula's wife was Madari. So then, his sisters, sisters of Shantamula one, okay, sisters of Shantamula one, Shantamula one. He was called Vasisthi Putra Sri Shantamula, otherwise we are calling him Shantamula one. So in the period of this Shantamula one, so were the sisters of this one. See the sisters, one is Shantisri and one is Hermesri, they were the sisters. One is Shantisri, one is Hermesri, they were the sisters of this one. Hermesri, Shantisri, Hermesri. Shantisri was given in marriage to Skanda Vishaka or Skanda Sri, we can say. Skanda Sri. And the husband of this Hermesri, not known. So, like that, anyhow. He got two sisters, that's one of the points you have to remember. Shantamula one got two sisters, one is Shantisri and one is Sarmesri. Okay, like that, so he continued all the activities. He performed many agnas. So like the administration of Shatavahanas only he continued all activities. So all the activities in the administration continued like the Shatavahanas. Because previously worked under Shatavahanas and came to know the administration, that's why whatever the things existed, in the period of Shatavanas. Okay, they were introduced by Sadesh Shantamula, one like that it was said. So it is said that he only introduced this one. Then he got this Santisri Hermesri. Then his son was Veera Purushadatta. His son was Veera Purushadatta. And his sister, his, his daughter was Atavi Shantisri. His daughter, Shantamula, one's son. Okay, Shantamula, one's son was. The Shantamula, Shantamula one, one's son, one's son was Veera Purushadatta. This Veera Purushadatta was the greatest ruler. Veera Purushadatta was the greatest ruler in this dynasty. Who was the greatest ruler? Veera Purushadatta. He was the greatest ruler in this dynasty, like that it was said. Shantamula, once Son was, okay, Shantamula one's son, Veera Prashadatta. Shantamula one's daughter, Shantamula one's daughter, Atavi Shanti Sri. Atavi Shanti Sri. Atavi Shanti Sri. She was given in marriage to Skanda Vishaka. There, that one was given to Skanda Sri. This woman was given to Skanda Vishaka. So, like that. So, the Shantamula once period, what happened went well. And he performed number of Agnas, donated uh, so lands, donated Agraharams, like that. So, things went on well in the period of, so this one. So, he performed Agnas like, he performed, he performed Agnas like, Agnas like, Rajasuya. Vajapeya, Rajasuya, Rajasuya, Vajapeya, Vajapeya, Agneya, Angirasamaya, etc. Agneya, Angirasamaya, 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 etc. Agnas. 
So there is a hippo form. He performed regnas like Rajasuya, Vajapeya, so this, so Agneya, Agni, so there is, a, so this especially, so Agneya, there is one of the important one. Angi Rasamaya, Angi Rasamaya, in GI, you have to understand. Angi Rasamaya, Agnistoma, etc., Agnas, so are performed by this one. Agnistoma, that is also one of the Agnas like that, it was said. Agnisthoma, Agnisthoma, Rajasuya, Vajapaya, like that. Many Agnas are performed by, so this one. The inscriptions which are given good account about this one, Rentala, Dachepalli, Keshanapalli, personally given by, so this first to love. Personally, he gave these three important inscriptions. Okay, what inscriptions are given by this? Shantamula 1, or Vasisti Putra Shantamula. Vasisti Putra, Vasisti Putra, Sri Shantamula, Sri Shantamula, Vasisti Putra, Sri Shantamula, we can see. Okay, so this one performed Agnas, you know, by Agnas were performed by this one. Good administration that was carried on, language that all advanced, Prakrit and Sanskrit languages. They also advanced in the period of this Vasisthi Putra, Sri Shantamula. Okay. Many Agnas were performed like that, it was as said by this one. Agnihotra, Agnisoma, like that number of Agnas were performed. Good administration that was carried on. Good administration that was carried on. And it was also secular like that, it was said. Right? All these important points. So I have to remember in this Vasisthi Putra, Sri Shantamula. Right? He was called Mahadanapati. Sata Sahasra Halaka. Sata Sahasra Halaka. Crows together, gold coins and cows were given to farmers. That's why he was called like that. Agriculture that advanced well in the period of so this one. Because people started tilling the lands, plowing lands at the same time. So they so they produced crops we can, right? So like that Vasisthi Putra Sri Shantamula, he was the first ruler. He was also called Santa Mula 1, right? Like that, number of Agnas, all these were performed. So then at last, who came to power in the sense? So his son came to power. His son succeeded. This was his Putra, Sri Shanta Mula. Otherwise, Shanta Mula. Now we remember, who said that they are from North India, Rapsan and Bula? Who said Karnataka, Vakil? Who said Tamil Nadu, Gopalichari, Gopalachari? Who said that Andhra, Caldwell? So like that you have to remember all this. Okay. So then, in the period of this one only what happened? So there is uh, his sisters, Shanti Sri Harmesri. So all freedoms are given to women. So property rights were given to women also. In his period only it was all started. Property rights were also given to. Property rights were given to women. Property rights were given to women and equal importance was given. Equal, equal importance. Equal importance. This equal importance that was also given to. So this woman. So like this, all these important points went on in the period of this first ruler we can see. What by important inscriptions given by this one? So they are giving good account about this Santa Mula one. Dachepalli, Keshanapalli, Rentala. Dachepalli, Keshanapalli, Rentala. Inscriptions said about him, personally given by. The inscriptions given by him. The inscriptions. The inscriptions given by him. The inscriptions given by him. What are the important inscriptions? Rentala, Dachepalli, Keshanapalli. One is Rentala, Dache Palli, Rentala, Dache Palli, Keshana Palli, Keshana Palli. So all these are given by this Rentala, okay, Dache Palli, Keshana Palli. So inscriptions were given by, so this one, they gave good account of put this one. So then land grants were made in the period of this one, land grants. Land grants were made like that, we can see. So all these points related to whom in the sense, so it is 
we are related to this one only right have you got idea up to this one so then we have to see this one of the important characters and the second ruler veera purusha datta veera purusha datta one of the important characters that we have to see veera purusha datta veera purusha datta is also one of the important characters veera purusha datta he was the son of he was the son of shantamula 1 he was the son of he was the son of shantamula 1 he was the son of shantamula 1 veera purusha datta in the period of veera purusha datta what happened means continued good administration his period is called golden age for buddhism he embraced this buddhism so this veera purusha datta okay embraced veera purusha datta embraced buddhism and all categories of buddhism developed all divisions of all divisions of all divisions of buddhism so all divisions of especially what happened of buddhism so there is they were developed here all divisions of buddhism what are the divisions of buddhism one is stavaravadins mahasangikas hinayana mahayana all these developed in the period of this one he was a strong believer of buddhism he did not like even so there is uh, saivism in saivism many categories they are there you know well okay 28 agamas are there in saivism okay so like that here veera purusha datta so there is veera purusha datta spirit what happened so this uh, he was uh, the okay son of shantamula 1 and embraced buddhism so embraced buddhism okay embraced buddhism all divisions of buddhism developed in the period of this one only developed all divisions of buddhism developed like that we can see okay developed developed well developed well in nagarjuna konda in the period of veera purusha datta he was called having the sense he was called south indian ashoka veera purusha datta he was called south indian ashoka like ashoka he did a lot he contributed a lot for this buddhism so hence we can say that veera purusha datta period is called golden age we are calling this as is veera purusha datta for buddhism for buddhism if you see for buddhism veera purusha datta period veera purusha datta period veera purusha datta period is called golden age that is called having the sense that is called golden age because contributed a lot like that we can say veera purusha datta period so for buddhism it is called for buddhism veera purusha datta period is called he is called golden age okay golden age like that it was said whose period veera purusha datta period is called golden is because buddhism went fell it reached to hallmark in the period of this veera purusha datta so a statue that was found there at nagarjuna konda so that is a shivalingam statue on the shivalingam so this veera purusha datta put his leg and was it was completely pressed into the soil that appeared there in nagarjuna konda it indicates that keeping leg and completely pushing it into soil indicates that saivism that is completely so they suppressed and he gave much importance to much importance to buddhism like that it says much importance was given to so this one like that it was said okay so here veerapurusha datta put his leg on shivalingam a statue was found a statue was a statue was found at nagarjuna konda found at found at nagarjuna konda a statue was found at nagarjuna konda that is of that is of veera purusha datta the statue belonged to veera purusha datta that is the statue you can see 
So then on the statue what happened in the sense? On Sivalingam, on the Sivalingam, so this Veerapurushadatta put his leg and forcibly, okay. So uh, what happened in the sense here? This Veerapurushadatta, Veerapurushadatta, this Veerapurushadatta, he put his leg on Sivalingam and it was forcibly pressed into the soil that appeared. That indicates that Saivism was suppressed and he gave much importance to Buddhism like that. So, Veera Prashadatta, right? So, like this, so that's one of the important things which happened in the period of this one. Then, they also established Dhvani Vignana Mandapa. Dhvani Vignana Mandapa we are calling. Even if you speak in a small voice, it appeared very loud. That is called Dhvani Vignana Mandapa that was also established in the period of so this Vera Prashadat. So these Sikshakus were also called Vijayapurishas. Because Vijayapuri that became the capital. That's why they were called Vijayapurishas. Otherwise, in the period of this when Nagarjuna Kunda, that well developed. That was called Sri Parvatam. Hence they were also called Sri Parvatiyas. Vila Kemani and Naru, Sri Parvati Uloni, Pilchinat Laga Tilsundi. Vila Kemari Vijayapurishuloni and Naru. Sugar cane became Ikshu and Sugar cane and that became the symbol. That's why they were called Ikshwakusani. That's one of the opinions. I told you all the important points related with this. Robson and Bula, they said that these people belong to Lord Sri Rama dynasty, North India. So, but Vagil said that they people belong to Karnataka. And Gopalajari said that so they belong to Tamil Nadu. And Caldwell said that Caldwell and Ethan Ephraim Prakaram will Andruloni. Adherakanga Krishna Godavari River region lo unnar ani teliyadam jarigindi evarni ikshwakus okay in the lo first character man chusam who is the first character which is related with this one okay first character chusam shatavahanas in their ruling style they divided the kingdom into states ani antunam so after the decline of this uh, shatavahanas only they came to power already we discussed so four rulers are there according to so these inscriptions. Who are these four rulers? Vasisthi Pratra Sri Shantamula. So then Veera Purushadatta, Yehuvala Shantamula, Rudra Purushadatta. These are the four rulers they came to power in Ikshvaku dynasty. Ikshvaku lelo, Shatavahanula Patanantaram. After the decline of Shatavahanas, Patanantaram Vachinavalu, Ikshvaku lelo Njapesi Yannam. Allah, Mare, they divided the kingdom into states and edhi, that uh, we are going to see in the administration. So there is uh, Rastani, Grama, Judiciary, all these. Uh, so we can see Viragal tradition when you would have Agriculture, trade, all these uh, we are going to see. Okay, language and literature. So that also we are going to like that. Mare, characters to like that. So there is, uh, okay, a characters uh, to like that. So they are one of the important uh, things in Japan. In the characters, so especially what happened. So there is characters Lamana Chusnet like First character that is of so there is who there is first one Mari. So Vasisti Putra Sri Shanta Mula, otherwise Shanta Mula and Japan. That we have seen. Second one, Veera Purusha Datta, we have to see. Veera Purusha Datta. Veera Purusha. Veera Purushadatta, he was the second ruler in this dynasty. Veera Purushadatta, he was called, having the sense, this Veera Purushadatta, he was called South Indian Ashoka because he was the only ruler in Ikshvaku dynasty who embraced Buddhism. His period is called Golden Age for Buddhism. All the divisions of Buddhism, they advanced well or developed well in the period of Veera Purushadatta. Veera Purushadatta, he was the greatest ruler. He was the greatest ruler. Veera Purushadatta was the greatest ruler in this dynasty. His period is called Golden Age. His period is called how? His period is called Golden Age for Buddhism. For Buddhism. Golden Age for Buddhism and Japasiyanam. His period is called Golden Age for Buddhism. That's important you have to remember. Mari, all divisions of Buddhism they developed any annam. Anni Kuda, Bauddha Matam Lo, Anni Shakal Kuda, Itani Kalam Lo, Abiruddhi Chandran Jarigindi. Anni Shakalu Ani Annam, 
అదే రకంగా బౌద్ధ విశ్వవిద్యాలయం కూడా నాగార్జునకొండలో ఏర్పాటు చేసిన ఘనత ఇట్ ఈస్ అ వీర పురుష దత్త ఓకే ఆల్ డివిజన్స్ ఆల్ బ్రాంచెస్ ఆఫ్ బుద్ధిజం దే డెవలప్డ్ ఆల్ బ్రాంచెస్ ఆల్ బ్రాంచెస్ ఆఫ్ బుద్ధిజం ఆల్ బ్రాంచెస్ ఆఫ్ బుద్ధిజం దే డెవలప్డ్ వ్యాల్ ఇన్ దిస్ పీరియడ్ అని అన్నాం వాట్ ఆర్ దీస్ వ్యాన్ ఇన్ ద సెకండ్ కౌన్సిల్ యూ నో వ్యాల్ సెకండ్ బుద్ధిస్ట్ కౌన్సిల్ హౌ మెనీ బుద్ధిస్ట్ కౌన్సిల్స్ టు ప్లేస్ ఫోర్ బుద్ధిస్ట్ కౌన్సిల్స్ దూ ప్లేస్ so in the second council buddhism was split into two they developed here in the fourth council again buddhism was split into two so then they also developed ila bauddha matamlo una shakalanni kuda abhiruddhi chendinatlu ga telustundi ee period lo veerapurusha dattas period lo mari emi unnai what are these divisions in buddhism one is stavira vadins stavira vadins we are calling stavira వాదిన్స్ అనేది డెవలప్ అయింది స్థవిర వాదిన్స్ మహా సాంఘికాస్ మహా సాంఘికాస్ మహా సాంఘికాస్ అనేది కూడా డెవలప్ అయినట్లుగా తెలుస్తుంది స్థవిర వాదిన్స్ దాట్ డెవలప్డ్ అని చెప్పేసి అన్నాం ఓకే స్థవిర వాదిన్స్ దాట్ డెవలప్డ్ ఇన్ దిస్ పీరియడ్ స్థవిర వాదిన్స్ అని అంటున్నాం దాట్ డెవలప్డ్ మహా సాయంకాస్ ఇది కూడా డెవలప్ అయింది ఇది రెండవ కౌన్సిల్లో ఇలా చిలిపోయాయి ఇన్ ద సెకండ్ కౌన్సిల్ ఓన్లీ ద వాస్ ప్లిట్ ఇన్ టు టు యాజ్ స్థవిర వాదిన్స్ అండ్ మహా సాంఘికాస్ స్థవిర వాదిన్స్ మీన్స్ దే డిడ్ నాట్ వెల్కమ్ చేంజెస్ ఇన్ బుద్ధిజం వాట్ ఎవర్ బుద్ధ ప్రీచ్డ్ దాట్ షుడ్ బీ కంటిన్యూడ్ దట్ ఈస్ ద మెయిన్ మోటో ఆఫ్ స్థవిర వాదిన్స్ మహా సాంఘికాస్ దే బిలీవ్ దాట్ బుద్ధ పాస్ ద వే హండ్రెడ్ ఇయర్స్ బోవో అండ్ వై షుడ్ బ్రింగ్ సమ్ చేంజెస్ ఇన్ బుద్ధిజం but it was not accepted by stavira vadins you did not listen the speeches of buddha you did not walk along with buddha how can you change the principles of buddhism no like that stavira vadin said maha sanghikas wanted to bring changes in buddhism then in the fourth council again so this was divided into hinayana and mahayana hinayana and mahayana hinayana mahayana they also came into force one is hinayana we are calling one is mahayana also we are calling hinayana people said that so here hinayana people what they said buddha is only guru master messenger like that they said but mahayana people believed that buddha is god mahayana people believed that buddha is god like that it is said hinayana mahayana we can see i got idea so then there is from mahayana once again vajrayana also came into force vajrayana in vajrayana they started worshiping the idols of buddha okay in vajrayana what happened they started worshiping the idols of buddha hinayana people believed that buddha is only guru so buddha is a guru like that buddha is buddha is so there is buddha is guru like that so they believed buddha is guru mahayana people believed that buddha is god okay they started worshiping buddha in vajrayana so they started worshiping idols of buddha idols of buddha were worshiped idols of buddha idols of buddha were worshiped okay were worshiped idols of buddha they were worshiped okay like that so here that is maha sanghikas welcomed changes in buddhism they welcomed changes welcomed changes welcomed changes in buddhism welcomed changes so these people they did not welcome they did not welcome changes they didn't welcome they didn't welcome changes okay like that so all these divisions uh, they developed in the period of veera purusha datta that's why his period is called golden age like that we are calling we are calling this one as golden age got idea so his period is called having the sense his period is called golden age for buddhism so then after adopting this buddhism or embracing buddhism he completely devoted towards buddhist uh, uh, systems so a statue that was found in nagarjuna konda where so he put his leg on shivalingam and it was forcibly pressed into the soil so oka shivalingam paina kaalu petti bhoomi loki tokki vestuna drushyam unna silpam bayal padindi idi evaridi ante veera purusha datta so he put his leg on shivalingam shivalingam paina kaalu petti 
Veera Purusha Dhatta put his leg. This Veera Purusha Dhatta. Veera Purusha Dhatta. This Veera Purusha Dhatta. He put his leg. He put his leg. Okay. On Shivalingam. Put his leg on Shivalingam. Shivalingam. On Shivalingam. Pressure that Shivalingam into the soil. Okay. Then he... Mari Shivalingam by na kalapeti. Bhoomi lo ke tokke vesto na. Drushya man jape siya na. Pressure the same into the soil. Okay. That appeared. Pressed. The same. Into the soil. And pressed the same into the soil. And pressed the same into the soil. That appeared here. So, this is the same thing. If you have a lot of people who are in the world, they will be able to get the same thing. They will be able to get the same thing. He will be able to get the same thing. And at the same time, importance was given to Buddhism in the period of this one. And Japan said, "Man, tell us something like that." Marie, then column lo Buddhism in it baga develop in Gaubatti. He then ni kala nemaniya naru golden age na. And Veera Purusha Datta was also called South Indian Ashoka ni pilcharu. Veera Purusha Datta was called this Veera Purusha Datta was called Veera Purusha Datta he was called so was called. He was called have in the sense South Indian Ashoka. How many people are it? Any? He was called South Indian. He was called South Indian Ashoka. Any? Which one? It's like that. So he was called South Indian Ashoka. Naru. Who was called second Ashoka? Kanishka was called second Ashoka. But South Indian Ashoka, that is Veera Purusha Datta. Like this, Veera Purusha Datta. In column below, he both of them are the one that developed in the name. Then. In Nagarjuna Konda, he established a Buddhist university. In Nagarjuna Konda, he was a Vishwavidyalaya and airport. That is one of the important universities, earliest universities we can say. They write Nagarjuna Konda. Nagarjuna Konda, he established a Buddhist university. He established a Buddhist university. This Buddhist university that was established by this one. Okay, Buddhist university and your name. He Buddhist university in airport just said. Okay, at airport just said, no, I can't go there. Earliest university in Japan, see your name. Like this, he did a lot in Japan. See, he tells us that. In this column, lo, Mary Bodhi Sharma was the treasurer. His treasurer was. So this Veera Purusha Datta's treasurer was. Veera Purusha Dattas. Veera Purusha Dattas. Treasurer was. Treasurer. Bodhi Sharma. He Bodhi Sharma Nathan who treasurer on that laga tell us something. Who was the treasurer? Bodhi Sharma. He Bodhi Sharma mena ko dalay upasika Bodhi Sri. Daughter-in-law of Bodhi Sharma was upasika Bodhi Sri. She was very rich woman. She was the daughter of so there is Dhanya Katakar Dharani Kota Merchant. Okay. So there is Bodhi Sharma's daughter-in-law. Bodhi Sharma. So there is Bodhi Sharma's treasurer was Bodhi Sharma. Bodhi Sharma's daughter-in-law was. There is Bodhi Sharma's daughter-in-law was. Daughter-in-law. Okay, Upasika Bodhisri. She was a very rich woman. Upasika Bodhisri. Daughter-in-law was Upasika. Upasika Bodhisri. This Upasika Bodhisri, she was a very rich woman. So, she was daughter of Revanta, of Amravati or Dhanekataka, Dhanikota. She was the daughter of. This Upasika Bodhisri was daughter of Upasika Bodhisri. दे सुपासिका बोधिश्री उपासिका बोधिश्री वाज द डॉटर ऑफ उपासिका बोधिश्री वाज द डॉटर ऑफ डॉटर ऑफ ए रिच मर्चेंट ए रिच मर्चेंट सो दैट इज शी वाज द डॉटर ऑफ सो दे इज रे रिच मर्चेंट रेवंता 
रिच मर्चेंट ऑफ रिच मर्चेंट ऑफ अमरावती अमरावती हिज नेम रेवंत हिज नेम रेवंत सो लाइक दैट शी वॉज रिच वन शी डोनेटेड मनी फॉर दिस डेवलपमेंट ऑफ बुद्धिज्म एंड पर्सनली वॉट हैप एंड देर एट नागार्जुन कुंडा छुला धम्म गिरी नेम ऑफ द प्लेस इज छुला धम्म गिरी एट छुला धम्म गिरी शी एस्टाब्लिश मंडपास विहारास एंड चैत्यास फॉर बुद्धिज्म यू नो वैल इन बुद्धिज्म चैत्या इज ए प्रेयर हॉल विहारा दट इज ए रेस्टिंग प्लेस वेर एवर बुद्धिस्ट मॉन्ग्स एवर टेकिंग रेस्ट दैट वॉज कॉल विहारा बिकॉज सो वेन दे वर गोइंग फॉर प्रीचिंग दे यूज टू टेक रेस्ट सम वेयर in the afternoon hours or in the evening hours like that so for that what happened viharas so they existed wherever these buddhist monks took rest they were called viharas so like that this woman established upasika bodhisri she established a chaityas and viharas so on mandapas for buddhist she established upasika bodhisri established upasika bodhisri दे सुपासिक बोधिश्री एस्टाब्लिश एस्टाब्लिश सो बुद्धिस्ट चैत्यास एंड विहारास आट चूल धम्म गिरी नागार्जुन कुंड ओके एस्टाब्लिश चैत्यास विहारास एंड मंडपम्स विहारास एंड मंडपम्स विहारास एंड mandapams mandapams for buddhist monks for buddhist monks for buddhist monks got idea for buddhist monks like that it was said for buddhist monks so there is mandapams they were all established for buddhist monks okay because she was a rich woman and believed in buddhism also that's why donated money and established all these at chula dhamma giri name of the place is so at chula dhamma giri only all these were established by so this woman at which place at chula dhamma giri chula dhamma at chula dhamma giri chula dhamma giri comes in nagarjuna konda at chula dhamma giri only she established the, so all these chaityas viharas and mandapams Chaityas, they are the prayer halls. Viharas, wherever the Buddhist monks take rest, they were called viharas. Like that, these important points you have to remember. You got idea? It all happened in the period of Vira Purushottama. Then, Santi Sri Harmes Sri, they were the aunts of this Vira Purushottama. Santi Sri Harmes Sri, they were sisters of Savasisti Putra Sri Shantamula. Otherwise, we are calling him Shantamula One. Shantamula One. Otherwise, Vasisti Putra Sri Shantamula, father of Vira Purusha Datta. His sisters, Shantamula One's sisters, Santi Sri and Miss Sri. Automatically, they became aunts to this Vira Purusha Datta. Okay, Santi Sri and her Miss Sri. So this, uh, what happened in the sense in this period? So this Santi Sri and her Miss Sri. Shanti Sri conducted repairs to Paravata Ashram. The Shanti Sri, Vira Purusha Datta's aunt, Vira Purusha Datta's, Vira Purusha Datta's aunt, Vira Purusha Datta's aunt was on Shanti Sri. The Shanti Sri we are calling. The Shanti Sri what happened? Conducted repairs to, so Paravata Ashram. Conducted repairs to. Conducted repairs to Paravat Ashram, which is this Paravat Ashram. It is ashram of so Acharya Nagarjuna. It was established by Agnesri Shatakarani. You know well because Acharya Nagarjuna lived in the court of Agnesri Shatakarani. Okay, first he lived in the court of Kanishka. Later came to the court of Agnesri Shatakarani. Right? So like that. So this Vira Purusha Dattas. So aunts, okay, aunt Shanti Sri conducted repairs to Paravat Ashram. Harmes Sri donated money for Buddhism. Harmes Sri is also aunt. Harmes Sri, this Harmes Sri, Harmes Sri donated money for Buddhism. 
donated money for Buddhism. Donated money for Buddhism. Like this. So that's the thing which happened in the period of... So this one. Veera Purushadatta's period. Then, marrying aunt's daughters. That also came into... So there is a force came into scene from the period of Ikshvakus only. Because this Veera Purushadatta married... So there is Shanti Sri is one daughter, Harmi Sri is two daughters. He married all three daughters also. So like that. And at the same time, he also married Ujjaini princess Rudra Bhattarika. So like that polygamy that existed like that we can say. Marrying aunt's daughters that was started with Ikshwakus only. Marrying, marrying aunt's daughters. Marrying aunt's daughters. Marrying aunt's daughters started with Ikshvakus only. Started with. Okay, this was started with Ikshvakus. It was started with Ikshvakus. Because he married, Veera Prashadatta married. So, three daughters of so his aunts. So, Hermes Shanti Sri, Hermes Sri. Right? And also he married. So, Ujjaini princess Ruddha Bhattarika. Started with Ikshwakus, Veera Purusha Datta, Veera Purusha Datta, Veera Purusha Datta, that you have to remember. He also married, okay, he married Shanti Sri's one daughter, Harmi Sri's two daughters, so he married three, and also he married, okay, so there is Rudra Bhattarika, Ujjaini princess, he married Shanti Sri's. Shanti Sri's one daughter and Harmi Sri's two daughters. Harmi Sri's, Harmi Sri's two daughters. Harmi Sri's two daughters. And also he married Ujjaini princess Rudra Bhattarika. He also married, he also married. Ujjaini princess Rudra Bhattarika. Ujjaini princess. Ujjaini princess. Ujjaini princess was Rudra Bhattarika. He married even Rudra Bhattarika also like that it was said. Married Rudra Bhattarika. Like that polygamy that existed like that we can say. Polygamy that existed in the period of so this one. Then... In the period of Ikshvakus, Veera Prashadatta only, a statue that was found, that statue belonged to this one only. So, Mandhata statue belonged to this one, that was found there in, so there is especially Jagai Peta. Mandhata statue belonged to, so whom in the sense, Mandhata statue belonged to this Veera Prashadatta. Mandhata statue, Mandhata statue, located at, so it was located at Jagai Peta. Located at at Jagai Peta. Jagai Peta. Mandata statue which is located at Jagai Peta that belonged to Veera Prashadatta. It said about the qualities of an emperor. How an emperor must be. Suppose if you go to some stage according to that only we have to act. According to that only we have to maintain. Then only that brings a, a good uh, respect. Otherwise, okay, it will, the, the person will lose respect. Right like that. So this Jagai Peta only this Pandata statue that was found. Said about the qualities of king. It said about... The qualities of king, the statue, it said about, it said about how the king must be, how the king must maintain the things, how the king must be, how the king must be, like that it says, how the king must be like that, so it said, okay, said about the qualities of king. Said about the qualities of king. Said about the qualities of. Said about the qualities of king. That's one of the important things which happened in the period of this one. Said about how the king must be. Okay. So how the king must be like that. 
it was said how the king okay must be how the king must be right so like that what i said about the qualities of king so like that all these uh, are things related with this uh, whom in the sense there is vira purusha tattva only hence his spirit is called how golden age for buddhism all divisions of buddhism they develop in the period of this one only what happened mudupa stupa system that also came into force at the same time so there is viragal puja that also came into force viragal puja what is meant by viragal puja in his period only in his period in his period only in his period viragal puja came into force viragal this viragal puja that came into force like that we can see what is this viragal puja suppose in the battle field if the soldiers die then tombs are established and worshiping the tombs of dead soldiers that is called viragal puja worshiping the uh, tombs of worshiping okay worshiping the tombs of worshiping the tombs of tombs okay of dead soldiers of dead soldiers okay dead soldiers that is called viragal puja so this system viragal puja that also entered in the period of this so ikshvaku's greatest ruler veera purushadatta that you have to remember okay then mudupu stupa system that also entered in the period of this one only mudupu stupa system we are calling that also entered mudupu stupa system shaadi ke jashn mein khud ko kho jaane de system also naika tu khub sa mudupu stupa system also entered mudupu stupa system also entered Okay, in the period of this, Mudupu Stupa system, 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 one after the another okay so like that that is called what in the sense mudupu stupa we are calling right like that that also entered the society in the period of this veera purusha datta one of the important things uh, we can say got idea so like this buddhism what happened advanced well in the period of so this when then pusina shreni padika shreni they also entered so along with 18 guilds along with 18 guilds There are two things also entered once again. So this Pusina Sreni and Parnika Sreni. So two Sreni's entered in this period. Sreni indicate guilt. Two Sreni's entered. Two Sreni's entered. One is Pusina Sreni we are calling. One is Parnika Sreni we are calling. One is Pusina Sreni. One is we are calling Pusina Sreni. And one is we are calling Parnika Sreni. a sreni like that it was said sreni is nothing but guilt okay sreni is guilt like that we are calling got idea about this pusana sreni parnika sreni these two entered so previously what happened only 18 guilds existed so there is uh, so 18 plus 2 now they became so there is two sreni's entered now they became 20 previously in the period of shatavahana was only 18 existed two more sreenis entered now they became 20 we can say sreeni is a guild sreeni is what in the sense it is guild pushana sreeni so they used to sell flowers and sweets so they used to sell they used to sell flowers they used to sell flowers and sweets so flowers and sweets parnika sreeni they used to sell betel leaves okay they used to sell betel leaves they used to sell these betel leaves like that 
So here two stranies also entered in the period of this Veera Purusha Dattva. Veera Purusha Dattva was the greatest ruler, you know, pal. Mandata statue that belonged to this one. Dhvani Vignana Mandapa that was established in the period of this one, there at Nagarjuna Kunda. What is Dhvani Vignana Mandapa? Even if you speak in a small voice, it appears in a big voice. That is called Dhvani Vignana Mandapa. That was also established by this one. Dhvani Vignana Mandapa was established by him. Dhvani Vignana Mandapa. Vignana Mandapa that was established by him. Dhvani Vignana Mandapa indicates... So whenever uh, this, uh, if you speak in a loud voice automatically, small voice also appears loud voice. So like that Veera Purushadatta's period went well like that, we can say almost uh, many developmental activities took place. He was a good administrator, okay. So Nagarjuna Kunda, Jagaya Peta. So there is Ramiridi Pali, all these inscriptions are given by. So this one only. So he was the greatest ruler among all the rulers of so this one, only four rulers are there. So here in Ikshvakas, the next character we have to say is Yehuvala Shantamula. Yehuvala Shantamula, third ruler in this dynasty. Yehuvala Shantamula. Yehuvala Shantamula, he was the third one in this. Yehuvala Shantamula, he was son of Veera Purushadatta. He was son of Veera Purushadatta. He was very secular in nature. During this period, what happened? Temple architecture that developed according to Vastu. Previously, temples were not established based on Vastu. But from the period of this when temple architecture that all developed according to Vastu. Yehuvala Shantamula, he was very secular in nature. He was very secular. He was very secular in nature like that. In the period of this when Jainism, Buddhism, Hinduism, all these developed in the period, in his period, in his period, in his period, Jainism that continued, Jainism that existed, Buddhism that also existed, Buddhism and Hinduism, and Hinduism all continued, Hinduism all continued, okay, all existed, all existed. Okay, all existed and continued. He was very secular. Then in the period of this one only what happened? Temple architecture. Previously his father started Pushpa Bhadra Swami temple. Pushpa Bhadra Swami temple is a Shiva temple that is completed by this Yehuvala Shantamula. He completed Pushpa Bhadra Swami temple. This Pushpa Bhadra Swami. Pushpa Bhadra Swami temple. This Pushpa Bhadra Swami temple. Okay, so that is a Shiva temple that was completed by this one. Shiva temple. This temple is a Shiva temple that was completed by. So this Sehvala Shantamula like that it was said. Many temples they were so completed in this period, especially in his period. His commander was Elisri. His commander was Elisri. He established Rastabuja Narayana Swami temple. Elisri. Elisri established Astabhuja, Astabhuja Narayana Swami Temple, Narayana Swami Temple, Narayana Swami Temple that was established in the period of this one. This Astabhuja Narayana Swami Temple is Vishnu Temple. This is Vishnu Temple like that it was said. This one is Vishnu Temple. Okay, it indicates that Saivism that was there and Vaishnavism also existed in the period of this one. Saivism, people who worshipped Lord Shiva, they are called Saivites, you know, all. Saivite monks later came, okay. Saivite monks, they are called, uh, this Nayanars, 63 in number. And all wars there, so they belong to Vaishnavism, like that. So here, so Astabuja Narayana Swami temple that was also uh, developed like that, we can say. Then, not only this, okay, Navabrahma temples, Navabrahma temples, they were also developed. Navabrahma temples, Navabrahma temple, that was also Hariti temple, so goddess of children, Hariti, this Hariti temple, that is goddess of children, like that it was said. Hariti temple that was established, okay, so Navagraha temples, they were also established. Kubera temple that was developed. 
Kubera, Kubera Temple, that was also developed in the period of so this one Kubera Temple. Okay, like that, number of temples came into force. Mainly temple architecture that developed, especially according to Vastu. Okay, temple architecture that developed according to Vastu. So these temples were established according to us. Temples were established. Temples were established. Temples were established having the sense according to Vastu. According to Vastu. Okay, according to Vastu only, this temple architecture that developed. Vastu. Okay. Previously, it was not like that. Suppose if you see Shadavana's period, Chetur district, Gudimalam, oldest temple, the Akshava temple that existed, it was not built according to Vastu, but later in modern period, according to Vastu only, that was developed. Because when devotees, they started moving to that temple, automatically, they expanded the things and according to Vastu only, that was all established by using all the uh, stones, etc. Right like that. So temples were established according to us. So first, they used to establish Garbhagraha. So this Garbhagraha we are calling where the statue is kept. Garbhagraha. Some gap is given and they used to establish Antaralam. Antaralam. Antaralam that was established. After that, they gave some gap and Mandapam was established. Mandapam. Okay, Mandapam. Devotees, they will stand there in Mandapam. And after that, Dvajasthambam, that was established. Dvajasthambam. Dvajasthambam, that was also established by them. Then Balipitam was established. Balipitam, like that. So here, according to Vasu only, what happened? They established all this like that, it was said. Okay, first one Garbhagraha, we can say. Second one Antaralam, then Mandapam. The Jastambam, like that Balipetam, all these were systematically established in this period that all continued well. So temple architecture that developed in the period of Yehuvala Shantamula, that you have to remember. Yehuvala Shantamula's period, so that went well. He was very secular in nature like that it was said and he was also a good administrator. Like father, he also continued the same activities. But temple architecture that went well. Jainism that also continued, Buddhism also continued in the period of this one, right? So after him only, the last ruler who came to power was Rudra Purushadatta, the fourth one in this dynasty. Rudra Purushadatta. Rudra Purushadatta was the fourth one and the last one in this dynasty. Even though he was capable of doing things, but circumstances so did not cooperate. Circumstances did not cooperate this man to administer things well. He was capable, but circumstances also must be good. Okay, then only it is possible to continue. Otherwise, uh, it is not possible. So like that Rudra Purushadatta's period, he wanted to bring back past glory too. So this Ikshwaku dynasty, whatever the things previously, Veera Purushadatta's period, Yehuvala days, uh, so uh, Shantamula once period, Things went well. He wanted to bring back those conditions, but what happened? So he didn't. Okay. So like that, Rudra Prasadatta was the last ruler in this dynasty. He was the last ruler in this dynasty. In this dynasty, according to inscriptions, it is according to, according to, according to what in the sense? According to inscriptions. According to inscriptions. According to what in this sense? According to inscriptions only. Last ruler in this dynasty, according to inscriptions. So that is Rudra Purusha Datta. Because inscriptions said that there are only four rulers. Okay, there are only how many rulers? Four rulers. They are there like that. It said that's why Rudra Purusha Datta was the last ruler. At last, what happened? He was defeated in the hands of Pallava ruler, so Simhavarma. Okay, he was defeated in the hands of, he was, he was defeated in the hands of, in the hands of, in the hands of Pallava ruler Simha Varma, in the hands of Pallava ruler, Pallava ruler Simha Varma, 
Simha Varma with that only this dynasty so that was ended okay this dynasty what happened that came to end coming to the administration like shatavahanas so they divided the kingdom into state rashtra rashtradhipati was the head otherwise amatya or mahamatya like that they used to call okay coming to the so there is especially so the administration if you see so this sekshwaku shatavahanas in their ruling style so they divided the kingdom into states state is called rashtra this state is called rashtra like that it was said rashtra so then vishaya vishaya like that they also then last one grama so like that so there were the divisions in the administration rashtra vishaya otherwise vishaya that is also pranta like that they called got idea so like that so things what happened in the sense went well in the period of so this one okay so all these things uh, went on well so then we can see so this rashtra grama mainly what happened rashtra rashtra that was headed by amatya otherwise rashtradhipati okay or we can say so there is uh, so first unit in the administration first division we can say so last one in the administration is gramam last unit in the administration this is the last unit in the in the administration that is administration like that it was said last unit in the administration that is gramam rashtra that is a state rashtram indicates a state we can say state is headed by rashtradhipati otherwise amatyas mahamatyas different names they are there to this one then judiciary that also existed well in this period dharmasanas judiciary that is called dharmasanas judges same name they continued okay dharmasanas like that they used to call dharmasanas dharmasanas like that it was all said okay so then to assist the king officers they existed in every department especially because it is not possible king possible for the king to administer each and everything that's why so there must be some attenders or assistants they are called officers so then officers they were extending cooperation so previously what happened so this nakarams we can say nakaram so nakaram in the sense one of the guilds like that so some officers otherwise so here so this gahapatas we can say so this officers are called gahapatas gahapatas like that it was said tax system almost one under the same we can say tax system that is under the same so bali bhaga bhaga or demeya that is the tax collected by these people also bhaga we can say otherwise it was also called deyameya bhaga or deyameya same coins they existed in the period of this when suvarna is a gold coin karshapana is a silver coin same coins if you see the coins also satavahana period whatever the coins existed one is suvarna and one is karshapana suvarna karshapana they were the coins suvarna is a gold coin karshapana that is silver coin they continued so taxes bhaga otherwise they may like that we can say bhaga we can say otherwise that is also called they may then military system so that also continued well military system if you see so military good military that existed chaturanga bala that continued even in this period also like that we can say so the military force if you see okay so military forces four forces they existed in the military four forces we can say one is so infantry cavalry elephantry chariots but uh, chariots did not play that much important role elephantry also did not play that much important role right so four forces they existed in this permanent army that was called katakam permanent army that was called katakam temporary army that was called skandavara so the same uh, names they continued And then viragal puja just now we have seen viragal puja indicates the soldiers uh, when they die in the battlefield the tombs are established to them and started worshiping the tombs will enjoy sir ante viragal puja annapudu mari yuddhamlo maraninchina variki samadhulu katti mari poojinche paddhatini viragal puja ani cheppesi annaru idi vila kalamlone konasagindi viragal puja so there is 
కంటిన్యూడ్ ఇన్ ద పీరియడ్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ ఫిల్ వీరగల్ ట్రెడిషన్ అన్నారు లేదా వీరగల్ పూజ అని చెప్పేసి పేర్కొన్నట్లుగా తెలుస్తుంది ఇలా మరి ఆల్ దీస్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ థింగ్స్ వెంట్ వెల్ ఇన్ ద పీరియడ్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ యక్ష్వాక్ డైనాస్టీ పీరియడ్లోనే ఇవన్నీ అని చెప్పేసి అంటున్నాం మరి ఎకనమిక్ కండిషన్స్లో అగ్రికల్చర్ ఉంది అదే రకంగా ట్రేడ్ అండ్ కామర్స్ ఉంది అగ్రికల్చర్ దట్ వెంట్ వెల్ అగ్రికల్చర్ అనేది ఆటోమేటికలీ వెంట్ వెల్ వన్ సిక్స్ ట్యాక్స్ దట్ ఆల్సో కలెక్టెడ్ సో అగ్రికల్చర్ దట్ ఈస్ అ మెయిన్ సోర్స్ ఆఫ్ ఇన్కమ్ దట్ ఈస్ అ మెయిన్ సోర్స్ ఆఫ్ మెయిన్ సోర్స్ ఆఫ్ ఇన్కమ్ దట్ ఈస్ అగ్రికల్చర్ అని చెప్పేసి అన్నాం ఆల్ క్రాప్స్ ఆర్ నోన్ టు దీస్ పీపుల్ అన్ని క్రాప్స్ కూడా తెలుసు అని చెప్పి తెలుస్తుంది అగ్రికల్చర్ అనేది బాగా డెవలప్ అయింది ఓకే సో దెన్ ట్రేడ్ అండ్ కామర్స్ ఆల్సో డెవలప్డ్ అని చెప్పేసి అన్నాం వన్ సిక్స్ ట్యాక్స్ను పే చేసేవాళ్ళు హౌ మచ్ ట్యాక్స్ ఫస్ట్ పెయిడ్ మీన్స్ వన్ సిక్స్ ట్యాక్స్ ట్రేడ్ అండ్ కామర్స్ దట్ ఈస్ క్యారీడ్ ఆన్ విత్ రోమ్ జావా మలయా సుమత్ర అయితే రోమ్తో కొంత వ్యాపారాలు తగ్గడం జరిగింది రోమ్తో ఏమైందంటే ట్రేడ్ అండ్ కామర్స్ దట్ ఈస్ డిక్లైన్ డె లిటిల్ బెట్ ఎ లిటిల్ బెట్ రోమ్ విత్ రోమ్ వాట్ హ్యాపెండ్ ఎ లిటిల్ బెట్ డిక్లైన్డ్ ఎ లిటిల్ బెట్ డిక్లైన్డ్ అని చెప్పేసి అన్నాం కానీ కొనసాగడం అనేది జరిగింది రోమ్తో కొనసాగింది జావా మలయా సుమత్ర జావా మలయా సుమత్ర అండ్ శ్రీలంకన్ ఐలాండ్స్ అండ్ శ్రీలంక అని చెప్పేసి అన్నాం ఈ దేశాలంతా కూడా వర్తక వ్యాపారాలు చేశారు ద కాయిన్స్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ రోమన్ కాయిన్స్ దే ఆర్ కాల్డ్ దీన్ ఆర్ అమాషకాస్ రోమన్ కాయిన్స్ వర్ కాల్డ్ డ్యూరింగ్ దట్ టైమ్ దిస్ రోమన్ కాయిన్స్ వర్ కాల్డ్ రోమన్ కాయిన్స్ ఆర్ కాల్డ్ హవ్ ఇన్ ద సెన్స్ దే ఆర్ కాల్డ్ దీన్ ఆర్ అమాషకాస్ దిస్ దీన్ ఆర్ అమాషకాస్ దీన్ ఆర్ అమాషకాస్ దే ఆర్ ఫౌండ్ ఎట్ నాగార్జున కొండ అమరావతి రీజియన్స్ దిస్ రోమన్ కాయిన్స్ వర్ ఫౌండ్ ఎట్ దీన్ ఆర్ అమాషకాస్ వర్ ఫౌండ్ ఎట్ నాగార్జున కొండ అండ్ అమరావతి రీజియన్స్ ఓకే దీన్ ఆర్ అమాషకాస్ Roman gold coins were called Roman gold coins Roman gold coins were called were called okay Roman gold coins were called dinara mashakas dinara mashakas mashakas okay found at found okay so there is found at nagarjuna konda region amaravati region found at Nagarjuna Konda and Amaravati regions like that it was said Nagarjuna Konda Nagarjuna Konda and Amaravati regions and Amaravati regions Amaravati regions only they were found like that it was said Nagarjuna Konda and Amaravati regions this Dinara Mashakas they were found Dinara Mashakas they are the so this roman gold coins we can say trade and commerce continued with them they exported spices okay cotton cloth that was exported by them gems and jewelry that also exported by these people spices what are the exports of these people if you see the exports of these people the exports okay exports of these people if you see spices were exported by them spices cotton cloth that was also exported cotton cloth that was exported by them like that it was said and gems and jewelry they were also exported by them gems and jewelry okay so there is gems and jewelry gems and jewelry we can see all these were then coming to imports if you see what imports are there in the period of so this one imports we see the imports gold and silver that was imported by these people one is gold and one is silver gold and silver that was imported by these people okay so like that anyhow ikshwaga period went well coming to this agriculture coming to agriculture all crops are known to these people so all the crops they are known to these people like that it was as said okay coconuts are abundantly produced by them at the same time paddy wheat barley all these crops are known to these people they domesticated all the animals cattle so cattle wealth that also existed so in every aspect what happened ikshvakus period so went well like that we can say the period of ikshvakus okay language and literature so prakrit language developed and sanskrit also existed so like that it was said prakrit language that continued prakrit language prakrit language 
that continued. So this Prakrit language that continued. At the same time, Sanskrit also entered. Sanskrit also existed. This Sanskrit also. Sanskrit also existed. Okay, Sanskrit also. We can argue that Prakrit developed under the reason because epigraphs were written in Prakrit language only. Sanskrit overtook Prakrit as royal language in 4th so century AD. So, this, uh, so like this, all these important things went well in the period of this Ikshwaku dynasty like that we can say. Ikshwaku dynasty period if you see. So, all these uh, things they happened. So, the exports they are good, imports they are good. And coming to conditions, if you see, social conditions, so people are happy. Chatravarna system that existed in this Chatravarna, Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Sudra. Brahmin community people, they thought themselves they are superior. They are completely superior in the society like that. They people, they thought. Anyhow, so the Sanskrit that was spoken by them, Prakrit also used to. So there is a... So, they are spoken by them like that, we can say. Right, all these important things, uh, if we see that, okay, if we see that things went well in the period of, okay, this one. Junagad inscription, Junagad inscription given by Rudradama. So, this Rudradama did not belong to Ikshvakus, okay. Rudradama, so this uh, belonged to this Rudradama, Rudradama belonged to this one belonged. Okay. Sakas, we can say, belonged to Sakas. Okay. He belongs to Sakas. Kardamaka dynasty. Kardamaka dynasty. Kardamaka dynasty. Belonged to which dynasty? Kardamaka dynasty, like that. He was the first one in India to give Sanskrit inscription. That is Junagad. This Junagad inscription is also called Girnar. Junagar inscription, Junagar inscription, or Junagar like that we can say. This Junagar or Junagar inscription, so is the first Sanskrit inscription. First Sanskrit inscription. First Sanskrit inscription like that it was said. Which is the first Sanskrit inscription that you have to. Suppose if, uh, which is the first Telugu inscription, then you can say that Kalamalla. Kalamalla that was given by Renati Chodas ruler Dhanunjaya Varma. So that is the first Telugu inscription. First Telugu newspaper, Satya Dutta. Ballari Christian Missionary Association published that newspaper. You have to remember. First, first, first. Okay. First Telugu newspaper. First Telugu newspaper, Satya Dutta. First Telugu inscription, Kalamalla. Kalamalla is the first Telugu inscription like that. So we can say, right? But Junagad inscription is the first Sanskrit inscription in India. This Junagad is also called Girnar. Okay, it is also called how Girnar. Ikshwakus were the first royals to have revived Sanskrit. Sanskrit also developed in the period of this one. Like this, Ikshwakus period, what happened? Went well like that, we can say. Two more Srini joined this one. Mainly we have to remember what is meant by Viragal Puja. Viragal Puja indicates what in the sense. Viragal Puja says that, okay, to the dead soldiers, they used to establish tombs. And they used to worship the tombs of dead soldiers. That is Viragal Puja. Okay, like that. That's all important one you have to remember. Okay, then. Writings of, so there's Buddhist masters. Buddha Gosha. Okay, so Bhaviveka, Arya Deva, Dharma Kirti, so all these wrote uh, books. Chulla Vagga Vishuddhi Maga Devarda, books written by this one, Buddha Gosha. Buddha Gosha belonged to Guntur district, Namalipuri, and he went to Sri Lanka, learned so many things. He learned so many things like that, it was said. Buddha Gosha wrote the book. Okay, Chulla Vagga Vishuddhi Maga, Chulla Vagga. Chulla Vagga and Vishuddhi Maga. Vishuddhi. Chulla Vagga and Vishuddhi Maga, we can see. Bhaviveka is also one of the important men. Arya Deva, Dharma Kirti was the last man so who propagated Buddhism so in India. Dharma Kirti was the last one. Last one to propagate. To propagate Buddhism. To propagate Buddhism. 
okay so like that things went well in the period of this when that you have to remember position of woman it went well okay position of woman what happened because they used to get the titles even woman so this uh, commander's wife or uh, so noble class especially amatya mahamatya like that the woman used to participate in all activities and they also got titles okay maha bhojaki maha so there is uh, bhojaki like that woman's condition that went well like that it was said okay so there is the shanti sri upasika bodhisri already i have seen rudra bhattarika okay so there is kodabali sheri all this rudra bhattarika she was the wife of veera purushottam rudra bhattarika kodabali sheri kodabali sheri is daughter of veera purushottam kodabali sheri also contributed money for buddhism kodabali sheri so this kodabali sheri daughter of daughter of veera purusha datta veera purusha datta like that it was kodabal rudra bhattarika wife of so we know ikshvaku dynasty greatest ruler upasika bodhisri this upasika bodhisri what happened lived in the court of upasika bodhisri not lived she was the richest woman lived during the period of veera purusha datta upasika bodhisri is was daughter of a rich merchant revanta revanta belong to amaravati then this woman established many chaityas viharas and mandapas etc in nagarjuna konda chula dhamma giri near the place is chula dhamma giri and at many other places also she established chaityas and viharas upasika bodhisri shanti sri this shanti sri she was aunt of this veera purusha datta or so sister of shantamula 1 sister of shantamula 1 shantamula sister of shantamula 1 like that it was said he had two sisters shantamula 1 one is shanti sri and one is harmya sri these two are the sisters of this one that you have to remember then upasika bodhisri already we know upasika bodhisri what happened she was uh, daughter in law daughter in law bodhi sharma who was bodhi sharma bodhi sharma worked in the court of veera purusha datta like this so all these important points uh, you have to remember in this okay shaiva and vaishnava phase they continued already we know temple structure that uh, came according to vastu according to vastu only temple architecture that developed like that it was said shaivism that continued vaishnavism also continued in this period already i told you shaivism indicates people who starts worshiping lord shiva they are called shaivites people who starts worshiping lord vishnu they are called vaishnavite so but tikana said that both are okay shivayam vishnuvaya okay so there is so especially shiva and vishnu not different like that it was said okay like that so there is a temple structures they developed i told you according to vastu only nodakeshwara temple that is also one hariti temple prashvabhadra swami temple kumara swami temple that was established by first ruler only so there is nodakeshwara temple that is also a temple hariti temple that is one prashvabhadra swami temple prashvabhadra swami temple that is shiva temple that is shiva temple prashvabhadra swami temple is a shiva temple like that it was said so this pushpa bhadra swami hariti temple goddess of children hariti temple okay goddess of children like that it was said goddess of children goddess of children like that it was said okay so then pushpa bhadra temple pushpa bhadra swami temple is a shiva temple it is a so shiva temple pushpa bhadra swami temple that is shiva temple so like that so kumara swami temple all these temples they are established in the period of so these people like that it was said so then viragal tradition that continued buddhism jainism sculpture all uh, were under the same mandata statue i told you so viragal tradition indicates whenever soldiers okay whenever soldiers die automatically what happened so the tombs were established and they worshiped at the tombs that is uh, so called viragal puja buddhism golden age for buddhism we are calling 
गोल्डन एज गोल्डन एज फॉर बुद्धिज्म गोल्डन एज फॉर बुद्धिज्म लाइक दैट इट वॉज सैड गोल्डन एज फॉर बुद्धिज्म वीरागल ट्रेडिशन वर्शिपिंग टूम्स ऑफ डेड सोल्जर्स वर्शिपिंग द टूम्स वर्शिपिंग द टूम्स ऑफ डेड सोल्जर्स दैट इज कॉल्ड वीरागल पूजा जेनिज्म कंटिन्यूड स्कल्पचर so this sculpture did not develop that much only few architectures pushpa bhadra swami temple astabhuja narayana swami temple nodakeshwara temple hariti temple like that few only mandata sculpture that was found there at jagai peta you know well it was found it said about the qualities of a king it said about the qualities of a king like that we can see so like this all these important points you have to remember so in this especially ikshvaku dynasty so how many questions we are going to get from ikshvakus previously whose period is called golden age so so this buddhism question that was asked it is in the period of veera purusha datta only so this especially mudupu stupa system entered in the period of veera purusha datta otherwise sometime ikshvakus like that it was given answer is given as ikshvaku dynasty nalamba dynasty so pallava dynasty like the dynasties they are asked that's why you have to remember so all these important points in this man okay so ikshvaku sometimes one question may be asked sometimes two questions also asked from this a topic so any how we can expect two questions from this ikshvaku dynasty right thank you Hi friends, we can see one of the important areas that is Ikshvaku dynasty. Ikshvaku, we are going to talk about this dynasty. Ikshvaku, after the decline of Shatavahanas, this Ikshvaku came to power. Ikshvaku is the king of the king. Shatavahanas is the king of 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 the king. These Ikshvaku were also called Vijayapurishas because Vijayapuri became the capital that's why they are called Vijayapurishas Vijayapurishu lo ni kuda annaru villa kalam lo Sri Parvatam that was called okay Sri Parvatam anje pesi ani annam so that developed well Nagarjuna Konda anje pesi annam that advanced well Sri Parvatam that's why they were also called Sri Parvatiyas ani kuda annaru सा नागार्जुन को श्रीपर्वतम पेर यह नागार्जुन को श्रीपर्वतम मरी वील श्रीपर्वतीस अदे रक मरी वील इक्वाकस अन एनी हाउ कैपिटल इज विजयपुरी प्राकृत लांग्वेज अं सांस्क्रिट लांग्वेज बोथ अडवां इन द पीरियड आफ् दिस इक्वाक डनासीटी सो अकॉर्ंग टू इंस्क्रिपन देर आर् ओनली फोर रूलर्स अकॉर्ंग टू इंस्क्रिपन मेरी चूस न there are only four rulers according to inscriptions if you see four rulers are there in this ikshvaku dynasty lo entha mandi palakulu unnarante four rulers unnarani cheptundi ala kaakunda mari according to puranas if you see seven rulers are there like that it is said according to so in this ikshvaku according to inscriptions according to inscriptions according to inscriptions there are so there is there are four rulers there are four rulers and je pesi annam entha mandi palakulu unnarante nalaguru palakulu unnatluga telustundi so first one vasisthi putra sri shantamula first one mari chusinatlaite vasisthi putra vasisthi putra vasisthi putra sri shantamula श्री शांत मूला अट्ना वाज द फस्ट वन अदरव वाज का शांत मूला वन इतनी के शांत मूला वन अच्छी आर् वाज का शांत मूला वन अना वाज का शांत मूला वन अदा शांत मूला अला पीव जी सैकंड वन वाज वीर पुष दत्ता वीर पुष 
So this Veera Purusha Dhatta, he was the second one in this dynasty. Third one, Maritius Nidlaite, so this Yehuvala Shantamula, Yehuvala, Yehuvala Shantamula, Yehuvala Shantamula, he was the third ruler, according to inscriptions. And fourth one, Rudra Purusha Dhatta, so like that, so four rulers, they administered this one. Purusha Dhatta, Rudra Purusha Dhatta Nethanu, Palan Chais Nethanu, this. Got idea? According to inscription. Manam inscriptions adharanga matrame, nalguru palakal matrame, chodamani jirkindi. Purana lemo, enemy yedumandi any, perkuna. Purana said that, so there are eight, uh, seven rulers. Puranas prakarangamari, seven rulers, and now we are not going to see. So uh, there is the seven rulers. We are going to see only four rulers because they are only important. Gurthunamari, so like that, summary to snit like they. Then, who was the founder of? So, there is especially the Ikshwaku dynasty in airport Chisna, Mottamadri Vadu Vasisti Putra, Sri Shantamulani, Leda Athanike, Shantamuludu Ani, Perunatlaka Tilisundi, Shantamula One Ani Annam. He was also called Shantamula One. He was called Shantamula One. Shantamula. Okay, you can write M O V R M U. Shanta Mula One and Japesi Perkonet Laga Tilsundi. Symbol of this one, lion became the symbol. Okay, so there is Harati Putra Sani Leda Sri Parvati Asana. So just now we have seen Sri Parvatam that advanced well. Nagarjuna Konda is called Sri Parvatam. This Nagarjuna Konda that was called. This Nagarjuna Konda. Nagarjuna Konda that was called Sri Parvatam. That's why they are called Sri Parvatiyasani. Perkonet laga telisundi. E Sri Parvatam ane de Nagarjuna Konda annam. Mari Agna Sri Shadakarni kalam lo gana chusnet laite. Nagarjuna Konda lo ne. E Acharya Nagarjuna Dikosam. Asrama ane airport jesa dannam. E de di. So this Paravat Asram that was established like that. It was said. Anyhow in the period of this Ekshwakus. Ekshwakula kalam lo mari chusnet laite. Lion became their symbol. The languages they continued the same Sanskrit and so at the same time Prakrit languages they continued. So basically capital is Vijayapuri in Japan center now. That's why only they are also called Vijayapuri Shasani Goda Pilcharu. Vijayapuri became the capital. That's why they were called Vijayapuri Shas. Okay. So they will look Mari Yemim Pirlunai. What are the names for this Ikshwakus? Ikshwakus Mari Jusnet Laite. Ikshwaku Saniyanam. Ikshwaku Sku Yemi Perlunai. Anadlaite. Vijayapuri became the capital, that's why they are called Vijayapuri Shas. So these people they are called Vijaya Puri Shas Saniyanam. Vijayapuri Shas. Okay. Puri Shas Sanjapis Perunatlagatil Sundi. Nagarjuna Konda that was called Sri Parvatam. Hence they were called Sri Parvatiyas. They were called Sri Parvati Yas Anikoda Perkonet Lagatil Sundi. Sri Parvatam Undi Gabati Sri Parvati Yasani. Leda Ikshwaku Sani. E Perla Nikoda Vilaku. Unnat Lagatil Sundi in Japesanam. That's one of the important points. So Lion became the symbol of these people. Lion. Official language of these people that is Prakrit. Sanskrit also existed in this period. Language Marichus. Language. Prakrit language that continued and Sanskrit also existed like that, it was said. Vila Karam Lo Samskada Bhasha Goda Unnat Lagat Lissnanam. Prakrit and Sanskrit also continued in the period of these people. Sanskrit Goda continued Unnat Lagat Lissnanam. All these important points you have to remember related with this. So, Ikshwakus. Then we have to see what important sources they are there to know the history of. So, these people that is also important. Coming to religion already. So, there is Vaishnavism and Buddhism only because. So, Buddhism is not like that. The period of this when Ikshwakus period is called Golden Age for Buddhism. Veera Purusha Dattas period is called. Veera Purusha Dattas period is called Golden Age. Yemani Anna Rente Golden Age for Buddhism and Japesi, Perkunamani, Jirgindi, any Anna. Eka, so will a Grinchi Telezadaniki, Unadavanti. 
ఆధారాలు ఏంటి వాట్ ఆర్ ద సోర్సెస్ టు నో ద హిస్టరీ ఆఫ్ దీస్ పీపుల్ సోర్సెస్ ఏమున్నాయని చెప్పి చూసినట్లయితే ఎపిగ్రఫ్ ఎపిగ్రాఫ్స్ అన్నాం సో అంటే నాట్ ఓన్లీ దిస్ వన్ సో వాట్ ఇన్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్స్ దే స్పోక్ అబౌట్ దీస్ పీపుల్ వాట్ ఆర్ ద ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్స్ ఇఫ్ యూ సీ సోర్సెస్ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్స్ స్టడీ ఆఫ్ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్స్ ఈజ్ కాల్డ్ స్టడీ ఆఫ్ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్స్ ఈజ్ కాల్డ్ epigraphy okay study of this study of inscriptions study of inscriptions is called is called epigraphy in emani annam epigraphy ani cheppes annam mari so number of inscriptions were given by so these people what are the important inscriptions they are giving good account about so these people okay what important inscriptions they are there nagarjuna konda okay so there is ramireddy palli nagarjuna konda inscription nagarjuna konda inscription nagarjuna konda amaravati inscription amaravati inscription ramireddy palli inscription రామిరెడ్డి పల్లి రామిరెడ్డి పల్లి ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ అల్లూరు అల్లూరు ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ ఉప్పగొండూరు 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 ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ ఓకే సో దాచేపల్లి ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ దాచేపల్లి ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ దాచేపల్లి ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ కేశానపల్లి ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ కేశానపల్లి కేశానపల్లి ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ ఎట్సెట్రా ది ఆర్ ఆల్ గివింగ్ గుడ్ అకౌంట్ అబౌట్ సో దీస్ పీపుల్ నాగార్జున కొండ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ అమరావతి ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ రామిరెడ్డిపల్లి అల్లూరు ఉప్పగొండూరు దాచేపల్లి కేశానపల్లి సో రెంటాల ఓకే రెంటాల ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ రెంటాల ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ సో ఎట్సెట్రా ది ఆర్ ఆల్ గివింగ్ గుడ్ అకౌంట్ అబౌట్ సో గివింగ్ గుడ్ అకౌంట్ అబౌట్ giving good account giving good account about this ikshwakus ikshwakus got idea like that number of sources they are there like that we can see in the period of these people especially so many inscriptions they are there what are these inscriptions you see once again so there is inscriptions if you see the study of inscriptions that is called epigraphy you know well epigraphy okay so epigraphy means study of inscriptions what are the important uh, inscriptions so some inscriptions if you see some inscriptions some inscriptions some inscriptions if you see so here nagarjuna konda amaravati ramireddy palli alluru uppagonduru okay uppagonduru inscription దాచేపల్లి ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ కేశానపల్లి రెంట్ ఆల లైక్ దాట్ నంబర్ ఆఫ్ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్స్ సో దే ఆర్ దేర్ లైక్ దాట్ ఇట్ వాస్ సాడ్ సో ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్స్ దే ఆర్ సో ఎస్పెషలీ దే ఆర్ గివింగ్ గుడ్ అకౌంట్ అబౌట్ సో దీస్ పీపుల్ దెన్ అమరావతి ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ దట్ ఈస్ ఆల్సో వన్ ఆఫ్ ద ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్స్ లైక్ దాట్ సో దే ఇస్ ఎస్పెషలీ సో గ్రీన్ స్టోన్ మాంధాత స్కల్ప్చర్ సో దే ఆర్ వన్ ఆఫ్ ద ఇంపార్టెంట్ స్కల్ప్చర్స్ లైక్ దాట్ సో ఇట్ వాస్ సాడ్ manthata statue said about what that you see okay manthata statue this manthata statue was found at statue was found at jagaya peta so manthata statue was so found at so this manthata statue was found okay manthata we are calling this manthata statue found at jaggaya peta jaggaya peta jaggaya peta like that it was said found at jaggaya peta so that was the statue of veera purusha datta he was the greatest ruler among all the rulers of ikshvakus he was the greatest ruler among all the rulers of ikshvakus like that it was said so it was the statue of it was the statue of it was the statue of veera purusha datta 
వీరపురుష దత్త వీరపురుష దత్త వాజ్ ద గ్రేటెస్ట్ రూల్ ఆఫ్ ఇన్ దిస్ డైనాస్టీ హిస్ పీరియడ్ ఈజ్ కాల్డ్ గోల్డెన్ ఏజ్ ద పీరియడ్ ఆఫ్ వీరపురుష దత్త దట్ వాజ్ కాల్డ్ గోల్డెన్ ఏజ్ హీ వాజ్ ఆల్సో కాల్డ్ మాడరీ పుత్ర మాడరీ వాజ్ మద వాసిష్టి పుత్ర శ్రీ శాంతముల వాజ్ ఫాదర్ సో ఓకే లైక్ దాట్ సో వీరపురుష దత్త ఇట్ వాజ్ ద స్టాచ్యూ ఆఫ్ వీర పురుష దత్త వి కెన్ సే ఇట్ సెట్ అబౌట్ ద క్వాలిటీస్ ఆఫ్ ఎన్ ఎంపరర్ ద స్టాచ్యూ మాందాత స్టాచ్యూ ద స్టాచ్యూ సెట్ అబౌట్ ద క్వాలిటీస్ ఆఫ్ an emperor how the qualities must be like that beautifully that was carved okay so the statue said about the statue said about the qualities of said about the qualities of an emperor qualities qualities of an emperor qualities of an emperor was said in that okay like that మందాత స్టాచ్యూ ద ఇస్ వన్ ఆఫ్ ద ఇంపార్టెంట్ వ్యాన్ విచ్ బిలాంగ్ టు సో దిస్ వీర పురుష దత్త దాట్ యూ హ్యావ్ టు సో దిస్ యూ హ్యావ్ టు నో సో వీర పురుష దత్త ఇ వాజ్ ద గ్రేటెస్ట్ రూల్ అండ్ వృద్ధ పురుష దత్త ఇ వాజ్ ద లాస్ట్ రూల్ అకార్డింగ్ టు ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్స్ అకార్డింగ్ టు ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్స్ రుద్ర పురుష దత్త ఇ వాజ్ ద లాస్ట్ రూలర్ లైక్ దాట్ ఇట్ వాజ్ సాడ్ గోట్ ఐడియా సో లైక్ దిస్ యూ హ్యావ్ టు రిమెంబర్ ఆల్ దీస్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ పాయింట్స్ in connection with this one ikshwakus okay what are the important sources inscriptions you know what important inscriptions they are there so important inscriptions if you see samaravati nagarjuna konda etc so puranas epigraphs puranas literary sources they are there in connection with this ikshwaku dynasty like that okay what ep- epigraphic evidences they are there puranas you know well literary evidences they are also there epigraphic uh, these sources indicates so this inscriptions just now only we have seen all these important inscriptions namaravati inscription nagarjuna konda jagai peta ramiridi palli alluru uppagunduru dache palli keshana palli like that many puranas you know well matsya purana so gives gudakonda about this one vishnu purana vayu purana matsya purana like that this puranas they are also ashta dasha puranas we are calling ashta indicates 8 dasha indicates 10 ashta dasha puranas all did not say something about this one only few puranas spoke about ekshvakus in ashta dasha puranas puranas are ashta dasha ashta dasha we are calling ashta indicates 8 dasha indicates 10 18 puranas some puranas said about this ekshvakus then literary evidences they are also there to this ekshvaku dynasty where did they come from whether they are the original inhabitants of andhra desh otherwise did they come from different places so like that that is also one of the important things you have to so no so then so their place of origin that we have to i uh, see then which clan they belong so the greatest ruler was veera purushottha vasishti putra shri shantamula he was the first ruler that we can say yehula shantamula he was the third ruler rudra purushottha he was the last ruler i told you so according to inscriptions there are four rulers already we wrote first one vasishti putra shri shantamula he was the first ruler in that dynasty was his chief putra sri shantamula he was also called shantamula 1 shantamula 1 second one veera purushadatta veera purushadatta was the greatest ruler his period is called golden age veera purushadatta was also called south indian ashoka veera purushadatta was called how he was called south indian south indian ashoka he was called south indian ashoka right so this was his chief putra shri shantamula he was the first one in this dynasty second one is veera purushottha third one yehuvala shantamula not yehuvala yehuvala this yehuvala shantamula shantamula okay rudra purushottha was the last ruler in that dynasty rudra purushottha okay so there is sir rudra purushottha was the last ruler so like that only there are four rulers in this dynasty like that we have so you know well ikshwaku dynasty 
Start the decline of Shatavahana's only they came to power, you know well. Shatavahana's last ruler, Pulemavi III. After the decline of that empire, Ikshwaku dynasty came to power, you know well. Vijayapuri became the capital, that's why they were called Vijayapuri Shas. Vijayapuri. Otherwise, they were also called Sri Parvati Yas. Right? Lion became the symbol of these people. Lion. That became the symbol. The first ruler in this dynasty was his Putra. Sri Shantamula. According to Matsya Prana, it is said that Matsya Prana says there are seven rulers in this dynasty, but inscription said that only four rulers are there in this Hikshwaku dynasty. Different opinions are there whether the localites of Fandra or did they come from different places. So different opinions they are there. Okay. What opinions are there regarding the coming of so or Hikshwaku is that you have to see. So they people administered Krishna Godavari River region. They people administered Krishna Godavari River region that was administered by the Sikshwakus. They administered. They administered. They administered in the Krishna Godavari region. Krishna Godavari River region. Godavari River region. Krishna Godavari River regions were administered by so these people like that it was said okay they administered so there is the regions especially so Krishna Godavari River regions were administered by these people like that it was said different opinions are they regulated with this Ikshwaku dynasty Ikshwaku Lagurinchi Bhinnamayana Tvente Viprayal Unnai Sri Ramani Vamshanaki Chandra Valdani Sri Ramani Ikshwaku Vamshanaki Chandra Valdani Allah Katanam Kuda Undi. Lay the Ikshuante Charakugadani, Nani Adikara Chinanka on the column Kaligun Narni, and the Vella Ikshuaku and a Peruch in the Nevada Kuda, Manakan Pistol. Okay. Ikshuaku, Ikshu means sugar cane. That became the symbol of these people, that's why they are called Ikshuakus like that, it was said. Ikshu indicates Ikshu indicates sugar cane. Sugar cane. Ikshu indicates what sugar cane. That's why, so they begin the symbol in the beginning. So that's why they were called, they were called Ikshwakus. But lion that was the symbol of, so this one, lion was the symbol of this Ikshwaku dynasty. According to Purana, so many rulers, seven rulers are there according to Matsya Purana. But according to inscriptions, there are only four rulers in this dynasty. Okay, then. So this Buddha Charitra, Ashwagosha wrote Buddha Charitra. Buddha Charitra also said about these people. Ashwagosha say, was the deputy in 4th Buddhist council. So he wrote the book. So there is Buddha Charitra. Buddha Charitra also said about these people. Buddha Charitra. Ashwagosha wrote the book. Ashwagosha wrote the book. Buddha Charitra. Buddha Charitra. This Buddha Charitra also said about so these Ikshwakus like that, it is said. Coming to their, coming to, so they said, especially whether they belong to Andhra or they come from, so different places, different opinions are there. What opinions are they related with them? That we have to see. Okay, Robson Buller said that they belong to North India, Lord Sri Rama's dynasty. They belong to North India, Lord Sri Rama belong to Ikshwaku dynasty, they people came from North India like that. It was said by Robson and Bula. Vogel said that they people belong to Carnatic region. Gopalachari said that they people belong to Tamil Nadu. And at the same time, Caldwell said that they are the original inhabitants of Andhra only. Right? So like the different opinions are there related with these people like that we can say. Okay. Related with this one. Robson and Buller. Robson and Buller. They said that Ikshwakus belong to North India. This Ikshwakus belongs to North India. Lord Sri Rama's dynasty. North India. And Lord Sri Rama's dynasty. And Lord Sri Rama's dynasty. Lord Sri Rama's dynasty like that. It was said by whom in the sense? It was said by Robson and Bulev. So Robson and Bulev. Vogel said that. So this Vogel said that. 
they people belongs to karnataka so they say shakus belongs to karnataka original inhabitants of karnataka migrated to this andhra region like that it was said by whom in the sense it was said by vogel vogel commented like that got idea so then gopalachari said that they people belong to tamil nadu so there is because some places which are related with them may belong to these people like that it was estimated by gopalachari gopalachari said so they people belong to ikshwakus belong to so there is tamil nadu so there is gopalachari said that gopalachari according to gopalachari they people belongs to tamil nadu they people belongs to tamil nadu but caldwell he said that they are the original inhabitants of andhra caldwell caldwell said that they are the original inhabitants of they are the original inhabitants of they are the original inhabitants of inhabitants of andhra krishna godavari river region that was the place of these ikshwakus like that it was said by caldwell so gopalachari said that they people belong to this one but anyhow so guntur prakasham nellur some parts of kadappa region all these were administered by so these ikshwakus like that it was said okay they administered all these regions so guntur region prakasham region okay so there is prakasham region nellur region kadappa region so etc kadappa etc regions etc they were administered by this ikshwakus like that it was said because this vijapuri comes there in guntur district only in agarjuna konda you know well so that's why they are called sri parvatiyas nagarjuna konda was called sri parvatam that's why they are called sri parvatiyas villani emuni annaru sri parvatam ani anna nagarjuna konda ku sri parvatam ani peru kabatti sri parvatam anni rangalalo abhiruddhi sadinchadam valla villaku sri parvatiyulu ani peru ade vidhanga sri ramuni vamshaniki chendra varani ikshwakulu ani ala unnatluga kuda telustundi okay లేదు ఆ విజయపురిని కేంద్రంగా చేసుకొని పరిపాలించడం వల్ల ద వెర్ కాల్డ్ విజయ పురీషాస్ సో డిఫరెంట్ నేమ్స్ ఆర్ దే టు దీస్ పీపుల్ సో దాట్ యూ హ్యావ్ టు రిమెంబర్ ఓకే దాన్ అకార్డింగ్ టు మత్స్యపురాణ సెట్ దట్ సెవెన్ రూలర్స్ ఆర్ దేర్ బట్ అకార్డింగ్ టు ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్స్ అల్లూరు ఉప్పగుండూరు దాచేపల్లి సో ద లాస్ట్ క్లాస్ ఐ టోల్ యూ దాచేపల్లి రామిరెడ్డిపల్లి సో ఆల్ దీస్ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ దే సమ్ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ సెట్ అబౌట్ there are only four rulers in this dynasty right so like that we have seen uh, so important points in this okay then so in there especially ikshwakus so the ikshwakus they divided the kingdom into states like that uh, directly entered the administration prior to that so we have to see the rulers who are the rulers first ruler in this dynasty first ruler vasishti putra sri shantamula vasishti putra who was the first ruler in this dynasty vasishti putra sri shantamula otherwise he was also called shantamula 1 vasishti putra sri shantamula shanta mula like that it was said vasishti putra sri shantamula otherwise he was also called shantamula 1 or he was called how in the sense he was called shantamula 1 shantamula 1 time period is not necessary because inscription said some period purana said some other period that's why time period not necessary okay not that much importance here anyhow shantamula 1 came to power he was the first ruler in this dynasty who established this ikshwaku empire ikshwaku empire that was started by this shantamula 1 only so this empire was started by empire was started by him empire was started by him so ikshwaku empire that was started by shantamula one like that it was said already you know that vijayapuri became the capital vijayapuri became the capital that's why they are called vijayapurishas that's why they are called how vijayapurishas like that it was said 
Okay, Nagarjuna Kunda also called Sri Parvatam, that's why they are also called Sri Parvatiyas. Vijayapurishas, Sri Parvatiyas names, they are also there. So anyhow, first ruler in this dynasty was a Sri Putra Sri Shantamula. He was also called Shantamula I. He got the title Sata Sahasra Halaka and he was called Mahadhanapati. What titles are they to this Shantamula I? The Shantamula one got the titles. Shantamula one. The Shantamula one. He got the titles. What titles are there to this one? He was called Sata Sahasra. Sata Sahasra. Sata Sahasra Halaka. Sata Sahasra Halaka. That's the title of this one. And he was also called. Mahadanapati. Sata Sahasra Halaka means crores together. Okay. So crores together, gold coins, lakhs together, plows. Plows for the purpose of agriculture. They are donated by this man. That's why it was called Sata Sahasra. One crore. Sata Sahasra Halaka. Crores together, gold coins and plows. Gold coins. Crores together, gold coins and plows. Plows were given to farmers, so that's why, so they were given to farmers, given to farmers, plows were given to farmers, that's why, so they was, uh, were given to farmers, given to farmers, since it was called Shatasa Hasra Halaka, and it was also called Mahadhanapati, this is the first title, second title if you see was also called Maha Dhanapati. Whoever may come and request something, use it to donate. So, like that, he was called Maha Dhanapati. That's also the title of this one. He was called Shata Sahasra Halaka, this one title. Maha Dhanapati, that's one of the titles that you have to remember. He was a good administrator. He was a good administrator and a devotee of. Uh, so this Kartikeya or Kumara Swami like that it was said. He was the devotee of Mahasena Kartikeya. He was the devotee of Okay, he was the devotee of Mahasena Kartikeya. He was the devotee of He was the devotee of Mahasena Kartikeya. Mahasena Kartikeya. In the period of this one, what happened? So this Vijayapuri became the capital. Sanskrit and Prakrit languages, they advanced. So you know well. Like that, things went on well in the period. Madari was a wife. Madari, his wife's name was Shantamula. Once wife was, his wife was Madari. Madari was the wife of this one. And Vasisthi Putra Shantamula's wife was Madari. So then, his sisters... Sisters of Shantamula one. Okay, sisters of Shantamula one. Shantamula one. He was called Vasisti Putra Sri Shantamula. Otherwise, we are calling him Shantamula one. So, in the period of this Shantamula one, so who were the sisters of this one? See the sisters, one is Shantisri and one is Hermesri, the other sisters. One is Shantisri. One is Harmiyasri. They were the sisters of this one. Harmiyasri. Shantisri, Harmiyasri. Shantisri was given in marriage to Skanda Vishaka or Skandasri, we can say. Skandasri. And the husband of this Harmiyasri, not known. So, like that, anyhow, he got two sisters. That's one of the points you have to remember. Shantamulavan got two sisters. One is Shantisri and one is Harmiyasri. Okay, like that. So he continued all the activities. He performed many agnas. So like the administration of Shatavahanas only continued all activities. So all the activities in the administration continued like the Shatavahanas. Because previously worked under Shatavahanas and came to know the administration. That's why whatever the things existed in the period of Shatavahanas, okay, they were introduced by so this Shantamula, one like that it was said. So it is said that he only introduced this one. Then, he got this Santisri Hermesri. Then his son was Veerapurusha Datta. 
his son was veera prasadatta and his sister radha his, his daughter was atavi shantisri his daughter shantamula vansa son okay shantamula vansa son was the shantamula shantamula van vansa son vansa son was veera prasadatta this veera prasadatta was the greatest ruler veera prasadatta was the greatest ruler in this dynasty who was the greatest ruler veera prasadatta he was the greatest ruler in this dynasty like that it was said shantamula once son was okay shantamula once son veera prasadatta shantamula once daughter shantamula once daughter atavi shantisri atavi shantisri atavi shantisri she was given in marriage to skanda vishaka there that one was given to skanda sri this one was given to skanda vishaka so like that so the shantamula once period what happened went well and he performed number of yagnas donated the so lands donated agraharams like that so things went on well in the period of so this one so he performed agnas like he performed he performed agnas like agnas like rajasuya vajpeya rajasuya rajasuya vajpeya vajpeya ఆగ్నేయ ఆంగీరసమయ ఎట్సెట్రా ఆగ్నేయ ఆంగీరసమయ 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 ఎట్సెట్రా ఎగ్నాస్ సో దేస్ హి పర్ఫామ్ హి పర్ఫామ్ ఎగ్నాస్ లైక్ రాజసూయ వాజపేయ సో దేస్ సో ఆగ్నేయ అగ్ని సో దేస్ so this especially so agneya there is one of the important are mrs angira samaya angira samaya ji lotus mika it's angira samaya agni soma etc agnas so were performed by this one he performed this soma that is also the vajpeya that it was so this agni so agneya agni so agni soma rajasuya vajpeya like that many agnas are performed by so this one the inscriptions which are giving good account about this fan rentala dachepalli keshanapalli personally given by so this first to love personally gave these three important inscriptions okay what inscriptions are given by this shantamula one or vasisti putra shantamula vasisti putra vasisti putra sri shantamula శ్రీ శాంతమూల వాసిష్టి పుత్ర శ్రీ శాంతమూల వికెన్స్ ఓకే సో దిస్ వన్ పర్ఫామ్ ఎగ్నాస్ యు నో బాల్ ఎగ్నాస్ వర్ పర్ఫామ్ బై దిస్ వన్ గుడ్ అడ్మినిస్ట్రేషన్ దట్ హస్ క్యారీడ్ ఆన్ లాంగ్వేజ్ దట్ ఆల్ అడ్వాన్స్ ప్రాకృత్ అండ్ సంస్క్రిట్ లాంగ్వేజెస్ దే ఆల్సో అడ్వాన్స్డ్ ఇన్ ద పీరియడ్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ వాసిష్టి పుత్ర శ్రీ శాంతమూల ఓకే మెనీ ఎగ్నాస్ వర్ పర్ఫామ్ లైక్ దట్ ఇట్ వాస్ ఆ సెట్ బై దిస్ వన్ అగ్నిహోత్ర అగ్ని సోమ లైక్ దట్ నెంబర్ ఆఫ్ ఎగ్నాస్ ఫర్ పర్ఫామ్ గుడ్ అడ్మినిస్ట్రేషన్ దట్ వాస్ క్యారీడ్ ఆన్ గుడ్ అడ్మినిస్ట్రేషన్ దట్ వాస్ క్యారీడ్ ఆన్ అండ్ ఇట్ వాస్ ఆల్సో సెక్యులర్ లైక్ దట్ ఇట్ వాస్ సైడ్ రైట్ ఆల్ దీస్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ పాయింట్స్ సో ఐ హ్యావ్ టు రిమెంబర్ ఇన్ దిస్ వాసిష్టి పుత్ర శ్రీ శాంతమూల రైట్ ఇట్ వాస్ కాల్డ్ మహాదానపతి శత సహస్ర హాలక శత సహస్ర హాలక క్రోస్ టుగెదర్ గోల్డ్ కాయిన్స్ అండ్ కౌస్ ఫర్ గివెన్ టు farmers that's why it was called like that agriculture that advanced well in the period of so this one because people started tilling the lands plowing lands at the same time so they so they produce the crops we can right so like that vasishti putra sri shantamula he was the first ruler he was also called shantamula 1 right like that number of agnas all these were performed so then at last who came to power in the sense so his son came to power his son succeeded this vasishti putra sri shantamula otherwise shantamula 
Now we remember who said that they are from North India or Absan and Bula. Who said Karnataka, Vakil? Who said Tamil Nadu, Gopalachari, Gopalachari? Who said that Andhra, Caldwell? So like that you have to remember all this. Okay. So then, in the period of this one only what happened? So there is the, his sisters, Shanti Sri, Hermia Sri. So all freedoms are given to women. So property rights were given to women also. In his period only it was all started. Property rights were also given to property rights were given to women. Property rights were given to women. And equal importance was given. Equal, equal importance. Equal importance. This equal importance that was also given to so this woman. So like this, all these important points went on in the period of this first ruler we can see. What important inscriptions given by this one? So they are giving good account about this Santamula one. Dachepalli, Keshanapalli, Rentala. Dachepalli, Keshanapalli, Rentala. Inscriptions said about him, personally given by. The inscriptions given by him. The inscriptions. The inscriptions given by him. The inscriptions given by him. What are the important inscriptions? Rentala, Dachepalli, Keshanapalli. One is Rentala, Dachepalli. Rentala, Dachepalli, Keshanapalli. Keshanapalli. So all these are given by this. Rentala, okay, Dachepalli, Keshanapalli. So, inscriptions that were given by, so this one, they gave good account of this one. So, then land grants were made in the period of this one, land grants. Land grants were made like that, we can see. So, all these points related to whom in the sense, so it is uh, related to this one only, right? Have you got idea up to this one? So, then we have to see this, one of the important characters and the second ruler, Veera Purusha Dutta. Veera Purusha Dutta, one of the important characters that we have to see. Veera Purusha Dutta. Veera Purusha Dutta is also one of the important characters. Veera Purusha Dutta. He was the son of, he was the son of Shantamula one. He was the son of, he was the son of, Shantamula one. He was the son of Shantamula one. Veera Purushadatta. In the period of Veera Purushadatta, what happened means continued good administration. His period is called Golden Age for Buddhism. He embraced this Buddhism. So this Veera Purushadatta, okay, embraced. Veera Purusadatta embraced Buddhism and all categories of Buddhism developed. All divisions of all divisions of all divisions of Buddhism. So all divisions of especially what happened of Buddhism. So there is they were developed here. All divisions of Buddhism. What are the divisions of Buddhism? One is Staviravadins, Mahasangikas. Hinayana, Mahayana, all these developed in the period of this one. He was a strong believer of Buddhism. He did not like even so this uh, Saivism. In Saivism, many categories they are there, you know well. Okay, 28 Agamas are there in Saivism. Okay, so like that here, Veera Prashadatta. So there is Veera Prashadatta spirit, what happened? So this, uh, he was uh, the okay, son of Shantamula one. And embraced Buddhism, so embraced Buddhism, okay, embraced Buddhism, all divisions of Buddhism developed in the period of this one only. Developed. All divisions of Buddhism developed like that, we can see. Okay, developed. Developed well. Developed well in Nagarjuna Kunda in the period of Veera Prashadatta. He was called, having the sense he was called South Indian Ashoka. Veera Prashadatta was called South Indian Ashoka, like Ashoka. 
he did a lot he contributed a lot for this buddhism so hence we can say that veera purusha tattva spirit is called golden age we are calling this as is veera purusha tattva for buddhism for buddhism if you see for buddhism veera purusha tattva period veera purusha tattva period Vira Purusha Dattas period is called Golden Age. That is called, I mean, the sense that is called Golden Age because contributed a lot like that, we can say. Vira Purusha Dattas period, so for Buddhism, it is called, for Buddhism, Vira Purusha Dattas period is called, he is called Golden Age. Okay, Golden Age like that it was said. Whose period, Vira Purusha Dattas period is called Golden Age. He is because Buddhism went well. It reached to hallmark in the period of this Vira Purusha Dutta. So a statue that was found there at Nagarjuna Konda. So that is a Shivalingam statue. On the Shivalingam, so this Vira Purusha Dutta put his leg and was, it was completely pressed into the soil. That appeared there in Nagarjuna Konda. It indicates that keeping leg and completely pushing it into soil indicates that saivism that is completely so they suppressed and he gave much importance to much importance to buddhism like that it says much importance was given to so this one like that it was said okay so here virapushadatta put his leg on shivalingam a statue was found a statue was a statue was found at nagarjuna konda found at found at nagarjuna konda a statue was found at nagarjuna konda that is of that is of veera purushadatta the statue belonged to veera purushadatta that is the statue you can see so then on the statue what happened in the sense on shivalingam on the shivalingam so this veera purushadatta put his leg and forcibly okay so uh, what happened in the sense here this veera purusha datta veera purusha datta this veera purusha datta he put his leg on shivalingam and it was forcibly pressed into the soil that appeared that indicates that saivism was suppressed and he gave much importance to buddhism like that so veera purusha datta right so like this so that's one of the important things which happened in the period of this one then they also established dhvani vignana mandapa dhvani vignana mandapa we are calling even if you speak in a small voice it appeared very loud that is called dhvani vignana mandapa that was also established in the period of so this vira purusha datta so the sikshakus were also called vijayapurishas because vijayapuri that became the capital that's why they were called vijayapurishas otherwise in the period of this when nagarjuna konda that well developed that was called sri parvatam hence they were also called sri parvatiyas veela kemani annaru sri parvatiyulu ani pilichinattu ga telustundi veela kemari vijayapurishulu ani annaru sugar cane became ikshu ante sugar cane ani that became the symbol that's why they were called ikshwakus ani that's one of the opinions i told you all the important points related with this Rapson and Bula, they said that these people belong to Lord Sri Rama dynasty, North India. So, but Vagil said that they people belong to Karnataka. And Gopalajari said that, so they belong to Tamil Nadu. And Caldwell said that, Caldwell and Nathan Yipram Prakaram, will Andhra lo ni, Adherikanga Krishna Godavari, River region lo unnar ni, Teli Zedan jirikindi. Yavar ni, Ikshwakus. Okay, in the lo, first character manchu sem. This is the first character which is related with this one. Okay, first character is Usam. Shatavahanas in their ruling style, they divided the kingdom into states and you know. So after the decline of this uh, Shatavahanas only, they came to power already we discussed. So four rulers are there according to so these inscriptions. Who are these four rulers? Vasisthi, Patra, Sri, Shantamula. So then, Veera Purusha Datta, Yehuvala Shantamula. Rudra Purusha Datta, these are the four rulers they came to power in Ikshvaku dynasty. Ikshvaku Lalo, Shatavahanula Patananantaram. 
ఆఫ్టర్ ద డిక్లైన్ ఆఫ్ శాతవాహనాస్ పతనానంతరం వచ్చిన వాళ్ళు ఈక్ష్వాకులు అని చెప్పేసి అన్నాం అలా మరి ద డివైడెడ్ ద కింగ్డమ్ ఇంటూ స్టేట్స్ అనేది దాట్ వై ఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు సీ ఇన్ ద అడ్మినిస్ట్రేషన్ సో దేస్ రాష్ట్రాన్ని గ్రామ జ్యుడిషియరీ ఆల్ దీస్ సో వీ కెన్ సీ వీరగల్ ట్రెడిషన్ ఇవన్నీ కూడా మళ్ళీ మనం చూస్తాం అగ్రికల్చర్ ట్రేడ్ ఆల్ దీస్ వై ఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు సీ నాకు లాంగ్వేజ్ అండ్ లిటరేచర్ సో దాట్ ఆల్సో వీ ఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు లైక్ దాట్ మరి ఈ క్యారెక్టర్స్ చూసినట్లయితే సో దేస్ ఓకే ఈ క్యారెక్టర్స్ చూసినట్లయితే సో దే ఆర్ వన్ ఆఫ్ ద ఇంపార్టెంట్ థింగ్స్ అని చెప్పేసి అన్నా ఇన్ ద క్యారెక్టర్స్ సో ఎస్పెషలీ వాట్ హ్యాప్ అండ్ సో దేస్ క్యారెక్టర్స్లో మనం చూసినట్లయితే ఫస్ట్ క్యారెక్టర్ దట్ ఈస్ అఫ్ సో దేస్ హూ దేస్ ఫస్ట్ వన్ మరి సో వాసిష్టి పుత్ర శ్రీ శాంతమూల అదర్వైజ్ శాంతమూల అని చెప్పేసి అన్నాం దాట్ వై హ్యావ్ సీన్ సెకండ్ వన్ వీర పురుష దత్త వై హ్యావ్ టు సీ వీర పురుష దత్త వీర పురుష వీర పురుష దత్త హి వాజ్ ద సెకండ్ రూల్ ఆఫ్ ఇన్ దిస్ డైనాస్టీ వీర పురుష దత్త హి వాజ్ కాల్ హ్యావ్ ఇన్ ద సెన్స్ దిస్ వీర పురుష దత్త హి వాజ్ కాల్ సౌత్ ఇండియన్ అశోక బికాస్ యూ వాజ్ ఓన్లీ రూల్ ఆఫ్ ఇన్ ఇక్ష్వాకో డైనాస్టీ హూ ఎంబ్రైస్ బుద్ధిజం హిస్ పీరియడ్ ఈస్ కాల్ గోల్డెన్ ఈస్ ఫర్ బుద్ధిజం ఆల్ ద డివిజన్స్ ఆఫ్ బుద్ధిజం ద అడ్వాన్స్డ్ వెల్ ఆర్ డెవలప్డ్ వెల్ ఇన్ ద పీరియడ్ ఆఫ్ వీర పురుష దత్త వీర పురుష దత్త హి వాజ్ ద గ్రేటెస్ట్ రూల్ ఆఫ్ He was the greatest ruler. Veera Prashadatta was the greatest ruler in this dynasty. His period is called Golden Age. His period is called how? His period is called Golden Age for Buddhism. For Buddhism. Golden Age for Buddhism. His period is called Golden Age for Buddhism. That is important you have to remember. Mari, all divisions of Buddhism they developed any annam. అన్నీ కూడా బౌద్ధ మతంలో ఉన్న అన్ని శాఖలు కూడా ఇతని కాలంలో అభివృద్ధి చెందడం జరిగింది అన్ని శాఖలు అని అన్నాం అదే రకంగా బౌద్ధ విశ్వవిద్యాలయం కూడా నాగార్జున కొండలో ఏర్పాటు చేసిన ఘనత ఇట్ ఈస్ అ వీర పురుష దత్త ఓకే ఆల్ డివిజన్స్ ఆల్ బ్రాంచెస్ ఆఫ్ బుద్ధిజం దే డెవలప్డ్ ఆల్ బ్రాంచెస్ ఆల్ బ్రాంచెస్ ఆఫ్ బుద్ధిజం all branches of buddhism that developed well in this period ani annam what are these when in the second council you know well second buddhist council how many buddhist councils took place four buddhist councils that took place so in the second council buddhism was split into two they developed here in the fourth council again buddhism was split into two so then they also developed ila bauddha matam lo una shakala anni kuda abhiruddhi chendinatlu ga telustundi ee period lo veera purusha datta period lo mari emi unnai what are these divisions in buddhism one is stavira vadins stavira vadins we are calling stavira vadins and they develop in the stavira vadins maha sanghikas maha sanghikas maha sanghikas ane kuda develop ayinatlu ga telustundi stavira vadins that developed ani cheppesi annam okay stavira vadins that developed in this period stavira vadins ani antunna that developed maha sanghikas idi kuda develop ayindi idi rendava council lo ila chili payi in the second council only they were split into two as stavira vadins and maha sanghikas stavira vadins means they did not welcome changes in buddhism whatever buddha preached that should be continued that is the main motto of stavira vadins maha sanghikas they believed that buddha passed away 100 years over and we should bring some changes in buddhism but it was not accepted by stavaravadins you did not listen the speeches of buddha you did not walk along with buddha how can you change the principles of buddhism no like that stavaravadins said maha sanghikas wanted to bring changes in buddhism then in the fourth council again so this was divided into hinayana and mahayana hinayana and mahayana hinayana mahayana they also came into force one is hinayana we are calling one is mahayana also we are calling hinayana people said that so here hinayana people what they said buddha is only guru master messenger like that they said but mahayana people believed that buddha is god mahayana people believed that buddha is god like that it is said hinayana mahayana we can see 
I got idea. So then, there is from Mahayana, once again, Vajrayana also came into force. Vajrayana. In Vajrayana, they started worshipping the idols of Buddha. Okay, in Vajrayana, what happened? They started worshipping the idols of Buddha. Hinayana people believed that Buddha is only Guru. So, Buddha is a Guru like that. Buddha is. Buddha is. So, there is Buddha is Guru like that. So, they believed. Buddha is Guru. Mahayana people believed that Buddha is God. Okay. They started worshipping Buddha. In Vajrayana, so they started worshipping idols of Buddha. Idols of Buddha were worshipped. Idols of Buddha. Idols of Buddha were worshipped. Okay, were worshipped. Idols of Buddha, they were worshipped. Okay, like that. So here that is. Mahasangigas welcomed changes in Buddhism. They welcomed changes. Welcomed changes. Welcomed changes in Buddhism. Welcomed changes. So these people, they did not welcome. They did not welcome changes. They didn't welcome. They didn't welcome changes. Okay, like that. So all these divisions, uh, they developed in the period of Veera Purushadatta. That's why his period is called Golden Age, like that we are calling. We are calling this one as Golden Age. Got idea? So his period is called, how in the sense, his period is called golden age for Buddhism. So then after adopting this Buddhism or embracing Buddhism, he completely devoted towards Buddhist uh, uh, systems. So a statue that was found in Nagarjuna Kunda, where? So he put his leg on Sivalingam and it was forcibly pressed into the soil. So a Sivalingam by a Kalapeti, Bhumiloki Tokyvesuna Drushamuna, Silpam Bail Padindi. Idi Everdi and Te Vira Purusha Datta. So he put his leg on Shivalingam. Shivalingam by a Kalapeti. Vira Purusha Datta put his leg. This Vira Purusha Datta. Vira Purusha Datta. This Vira Purusha Datta. He put his leg. He put his leg. Okay. On Shivalingam. Put his leg on Shivalingam. Shivalingam. On Shivalingam. Pressure that Shivalingam into the soil. Okay. Then he marry Shivalingam by now. Call it. Bhumilo ke tokke vesto na. Drushya man jape siya na. Pressure the same into the soil. Okay. That appeared. Pressed. The same into the soil and pressed the same into the soil and pressed the same into the soil that appeared here. So, this is the same thing. 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 He suppressed the same thing. And at the same time, importance was given to Buddhism in the period of this one. And you can see, I Like that, I have column that Buddhism is very developed in the world. But this is the column that is called Golden Age. And Veera Purusha Datta was also called South Indian Ashoka. Veera Purusha Datta was called, this Veera Purusha Datta was called, Veera Purusha Datta he was called, so was called, he was called how in the sense South Indian Ashoka. He was called South Indian. He was called South Indian Ashoka. So he was called South Indian Ashoka. Who was called Second Ashoka? Kanishka was called Second Ashoka. But South Indian Ashoka that is Veera Purushadatta. Like this, Veera Purushadatta in column low, he Bodhamatamane Dunatanga developed in the Nam. Then, in Nagarjuna Konda, he established a Buddhist university. Nagarjuna Konda lo Bhavata Vishwadhyalaya and airport he said. That is one of the important universities, earliest universities we can say. They write Nagarjuna Konda. Nagarjuna Konda, he established a Buddhist university. He established, he established, he established a Buddhist university. This Buddhist university that was established by this one. Okay, Buddhist university, any unknown. 
ఈ బుద్ధిస్ట్ యూనివర్సిటీని ఏర్పాటు చేశాడు ఓకే ఎక్కడ ఏర్పాటు చేశాడు నాగార్జున కొండలో అర్లీయెస్ట్ యూనివర్సిటీ అని చెప్పేసి అన్నారు లైక్ దిస్ హీ డిడ్ ఎ లాట్ అని చెప్పేసి తెలుస్తుంది ఇదని కాలంలో మరి బోధి శర్మ వాజ్ ద ట్రెజర్ హిస్ ట్రెజరర్ వాజ్ సో దిస్ వీర పురుష దత్తాస్ ట్రెజరర్ వాజ్ వీర పురుష దత్తాస్ వీర పురుష దత్తాస్ ట్రెజరర్ వాజ్ ట్రెజరర్ బోధి శర్మ ఈ బోధి శర్మ అనే అతను ట్రెజరర్ ఉన్నట్లుగా తెలుస్తుంది వాజ్ ద ట్రెజరర్ బోధి శర్మ ఈ బోధి శర్మ మీన కూడా లే ఉపాసిక బోధిశ్రీ డాటర్ ఇన్ లా ఆఫ్ బోధి శర్మ వాస్ ఉపాసిక బోధిశ్రీ షి వాజ్ వెరీ రిచ్ మన్ షి వాజ్ ద డాటర్ ఆఫ్ సో ద ఇస్ ధాన్య కటకార్ ధరణి కోట మర్చెంట్ ఓకే సో ద ఇస్ బోధి శర్మాస్ డాటర్ ఇన్ లా బోధి శర్మ సో ద ఇస్ బోధి శర్మాస్ ట్రెజర్ ఆఫ్ వాస్ బోధి శర్మ బోధి శర్మాస్ డాటర్ ఇన్ లా వాస్ దిస్ బోధి శర్మాస్ డాటర్ ఇన్ లా వాస్ డాటర్ ఇన్ లా ఓకే ఉపాసిక బోధిశ్రీ షేస్ వాజ్ వెరీ రిచ్ మన్ ఉపాసిక బోధిశ్రీ డాటర్ ఇన్ లా వాస్ ఉపాసిక ఉపాసిక బోధిశ్రీ దిస్ ఉపాసిక బోధిశ్రీ షి వాజ్ వెరీ రిచ్ మన్ సో వాజ్ డాటర్ ఆఫ్ రేవంత ఆఫ్ అమరావతి ఆర్ ధాన్య కటక ధరణి కోట షి వాజ్ ద డాటర్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ ఉపాసిక బోధిశ్రీ వాజ్ డాటర్ ఆఫ్ ఉపాసిక బోధిశ్రీ దిస్ ఉపాసిక బోధిశ్రీ ఉపాసిక బోధిశ్రీ వాజ్ ద డాటర్ ఆఫ్ ఉపాసిక బోధిశ్రీ వాజ్ ద డాటర్ ఆఫ్ డాటర్ ఆఫ్ ఎ రిచ్ మర్చెంట్ a rich merchant so that is she was the daughter of so there is a very rich merchant revanta rich merchant of rich merchant of amaravati amaravati his name revanta his name revanta so like that she was a rich woman she donated money for this development of buddhism and personally what happened there at nagarjuna konda chula damma giri name of the place is chula damma giri at chula damma giri she established mandapas viharas and chaityas for buddhism you know well in cha buddhism chaitya is a prayer hall vihara that is a resting place wherever buddhist monks were taking rest that was called vihara because so when they were going for preaching they used to take rest somewhere in the afternoon hours or in the evening hours like that so for that what happened viharas so they existed wherever these buddhist monks took rest they were called viharas so like that this woman established upasika bodhisri she established chaityas and viharas so and mandapas for buddhist she established upasika bodhisri established upasika bodhisri దే సుపాసిక బోధిశ్రీ ఎస్టాంప్లిష్ ఎస్టాంప్లిష్ సో బుద్ధిస్ట్ చైత్యాస్ అండ్ విహారాస్ యాక్ట్ చూళ ధమ్మగిరి నాగార్జున కొండ ఓకే ఎస్టాబ్లిష్ చైత్యాస్ విహారాస్ అండ్ మండపంస్ విహారాస్ అండ్ మండపంస్ విహారాస్ అండ్ mandapams mandapams for buddhist monks for buddhist monks for buddhist monks what idea for buddhist monks like that it was said for buddhist monks so there is mandapams they were all established for buddhist monks okay because she was a rich woman and believed in buddhism also that's why donated money and established all these at chula dhammagiri name of the place is so at chula dhammagiri only all these were established by so this woman at which place at chula dhammagiri chula dhamma at chula dhammagiri chula dhammagiri comes in nagarjuna konda at chula dhammagiri only she established 
so all these uh, chaityas viharas and mandapams chaityas they are the prayer halls viharas wherever the buddhist monks take rest they were called viharas like that these important points you have to remember you got idea it all happened in the period of veera purushadatta then shanti sri harmeshri they were the aunts of this veera purushadatta shanti sri harmeshri they were sisters of shavasisti putra sri shantamula otherwise we are calling him shantamula 1 shantamula 1 otherwise vasisti putra sri shantamula father of veera purushadatta he is a sisters shantamula one's sister shanti sri harmeshri automatically they became aunts to this veera purushadatta okay shanti sri and harmeshri so this uh, what happened in the sense in this period so this shanti sri harmeshri shanti sri conducted repairs to paravata ashram the shanti sri veera purushadatta sant veera purushadatta veera purushadatta sant veera purushadatta sant was on shanti sri the shanti sri we are calling the shanti sri what happened conducted repairs to sa so paravata ashram conducted repairs to conducted repairs to paravata ashram which is this paravata ashram it is ashram of sa so acharya nagarjuna it was established by yagnasri shatakarni you know well because acharya nagarjuna lived in the court of yagnasri shatakarni okay first he lived in the court of kanishka later came to the court of yagnasri shatakarni right so like that so this veera purushadattas so aunts okay aunt shanti sri conducted repairs to paravata ashram harme sri donated money for buddhism harme sri is also aunt harme sri this harme sri harme sri donated money for buddhism donated money for buddhism donated money for buddhism like this so that's the thing which happened in the period of so this when veera purushadatta period then marrying aunts daughters that also came into so there is a force came into scene from the period of ikshvakus only because this veera purushadatta married so there is shanti sri is one daughter harme sri is two daughters he married all three daughters also so like that you and at the same time he also married ujjaini princess rudra bhattarika so like that polygamy that existed like that we can say marrying aunts daughters that was started with ikshvakus only marrying marrying aunts daughters marrying aunts daughters marrying aunts daughters started with ikshvakus only started with okay this was started with ikshvakus it was started with ikshvakus because he married veera prasadatta married so three daughters of so his aunts so harme shanti sri harme sri right and also he married so ujjaini princess ruddha bhattarika started with ikshvakus veera prasadatta veera purushadatta veera purushadatta that you have to remember he also married okay he married shanti sri is one daughter harme sri is two daughters so he married three and also he married okay so there is rudra bhattarika ujjaini princess he married shanti sri shanti sri is one daughter <laughs> and harme sri is two daughters harme sri is harme sri is two daughters harme sri is two daughters and also he married ujjaini princess rudra bhattarika he also married he also married ujjaini princess rudra bhattarika ujjaini princess Ujjaini princess Ujjaini princess was Rudra Bhattarika he married even Rudra Bhattarika also like that it was said married Rudra Bhattarika 
like that polygamy that existed like that we can say polygamy that existed in the period of so this one then in the period of ikshvakus veerapurushatta only a statue that was found that statue belonged to this one only so mandhata statue belonged to this one that was found there in so there is especially jagai peta mandhata statue belonged to so whom in the sense mandhata statue belonged to this veerapurushatta mandhata statue mandhata statue located at so it was located at jagai peta located at at jagai peta jagai peta mandhata statue which is located at jagai peta that belonged to veerapurushatta it said about the qualities of an emperor how an emperor must be suppose if you go to some stage according to that only we have to act according to that only we have to maintain then only that brings a, a good uh, respect otherwise okay it the, the person will lose respect right like that so this jagai peta only this pandata statue that was found said about the qualities of king it said about the qualities of king the statue it said about it said about how the king must be how the king must maintain the things how the king must be how the king must be like that it says how the king must be like that so it said okay said about the qualities of king said about the qualities of king said about the qualities of said about the qualities of king that's one of the important things which happened in the period of this one said about how the king must be okay so how the king must be like that it was said how the king okay must be how the king must be right so like that what i said about the qualities of king so like that all these uh, are things related with this uh, whom in the sense there is veera purushadatta only hence his period is called how golden age for buddhism all divisions of buddhism they developed in the period of this one only what happened mudupa stupa system that also came into force at the same time so there is viragal puja that also came into force viragal puja what is meant by viragal puja in his period only in his period in his period only in his period viragal puja came into force viragal this viragal puja that came into force like that we can see what is this viragal puja suppose in the battle field if the soldiers die then tombs are established and worshiping the tombs of dead soldiers that is called viragal puja worshiping the uh, tombs of worshiping okay worshiping the tombs of worshiping the tombs of tombs okay of dead soldiers of dead soldiers okay dead soldiers that is called viragal puja so this system viragal puja that also entered in the period of this so ikshvaku's greatest ruler veera purushadatta that you have to remember okay then mudupu stupa system that also entered in the period of this one only mudupu stupa system we are calling that also entered mudupu stupa system mudupu stupa system also mudupu stupa system also entered mudupu stupa system also entered okay in the period of this one what is meant by mudupu stupa in the sense thinking something in the mind keeping all the stones one after the other one after the the if we keep all the stones like this so there is especially like how in the sense so we'll keep a big stone after that on this next on this next on this like that we will keep all the stones so that is a big stone will be kept here so like this this is what in the sense 
Mudupu stupa like that it was said. Mudupu stupa, keeping all the stones, one after the another. Okay, so like that, that is called what in the sense, Mudupu stupa we are calling. Right like that, that also entered the society in the period of this Veera Purusha Dutta. One of the important things uh, we can say. Got idea? So like this, Buddhism what happened advanced well in the period of, so this one. Then Pusina Srini, Pardika Srini, they also entered. So along with 18 guilds, along with 18 guilds, there are two things also entered once again. So this Pusina Srini and Parnika Srini. So two Srinis entered in this period. Srini indicate guild, two Srinis entered. Two Srinis entered. One is Pusina Srini we are calling. One is Parnika Srini we are calling. One is Pusina Srini. One is we are calling Pusina Srini and one is we are calling Paranika a Srini like that it was said. Srini is nothing but guild. Okay, Srini is guild like that we are calling. Got idea about this? Pusina Srini, Parnika Srini, these two entered. So previously what happened, only 18 guilds existed. So there is, uh, so 18 plus 2, now they became, so this two Srinis entered, now they became 20. Previously in the period of Shatavahanas, only 18 existed. Two more Srinis entered. Now they became 20, we can say. Srini is a guild. Srini is what in the sense? It is guild. Pushina Srini, so they used to sell flowers and sweets. So they used to sell. They used to sell flowers. They used to sell flowers and sweets. So flowers and sweets. Parnika Srini, they used to sell better leaves. Okay, they used to sell battle leaves. They used to sell these battle leaves like that. So here two strainies also entered in the period of this Veera Purushadatta. Veera Purushadatta was the greatest ruler, you know, well. Mandata statue that belonged to this one. Dvani Vignana Mandapa that was established in the period of this one, there at Nagarjuna Kunda. What is Dvani Vignana Mandapa? Even if you speak in a small voice, it appears in a big voice. That is called Dhvani Vignana Mandapa. That was also established by this one. Dhvani Vignana Mandapa was established by him. Dhvani Vignana Mandapa. Vignana Mandapa that was established by him. Dhvani Vignana Mandapa indicates so whenever uh, this, uh, if you speak in a loud voice automatically, small voice also appears loud voice. So like that Veera Purushadatta's period went well like that we can say, almost uh, many developmental activities took place with a good administrator, okay. So Nagarjuna Kunda, Jagai Peta, so there is Ramiridi Pali, all these inscriptions are given by, so this one only. So he was the greatest ruler among all the rulers of so this one, only four rulers are there. So here in Ikshvakas, the next character we have to say is Yehuvala Shantamula. Yehuvala Shantamula, third ruler in this dynasty. Yehuvala Shantamula. Yehuvala Shantamula, he was the third one in this. Yehuvala Shantamula, he was son of Veera Purushadatta. He was son of Veera Purushadatta. He was very secular in nature. During this period, what happened? Temple architecture that developed according to Vastu. Previously, temples were not established based on Vastu, but from the period of this when temple architecture that all developed according to Vastu. Yehola Shantamula, he was very secular in nature. He was very secular. He was very secular in nature like that. In the period of this when Jainism, Buddhism, Hinduism, all these developed in the period, in his period, in his period, in his period, Jainism that continued, Jainism that existed, Buddhism that also existed, Buddhism and Hinduism, and Hinduism all continued, Hinduism all continued, okay, all existed, all existed. Okay, all existed and continued. He was very secular. Then in the period of this one only what happened? Temple architecture. Previously his father started Pushpa Bhadra Swami temple. Pushpa Bhadra Swami temple is a Shiva temple that is completed by this Yehuvala Shantamula. He completed Pushpa Bhadra Swami temple. This Pushpa Bhadra Swami, Pushpa Bhadra Swami temple. 
this Pushpa Bhadra Swami temple. Okay. So that is a Shiva temple that was completed by this one. Shiva temple. This temple is a Shiva temple that was completed by. So this Ehvala Shantamula like that it was said. Many temples they were uh, so completed in this period. Especially in his period. His commander was Elisri. His commander was Elisri. He established Rastabhuja Narayana Swami temple. Elisri. Elisri established Astabhuja. Astabhuja Narayana Swami temple. Narayana Swami temple. Narayana Swami temple that was established in the period of this one. This Astabhuja Narayana Swami temple is Vishnu temple. This is Vishnu temple like that it was said. This one is Vishnu temple. Okay, it indicates that Saivism that was there and Vaishnavism also existed in the period of this one. Saivism, people who worshipped Lord Shiva, they are called Saivites, you know, well. Saivite monks the latter came. Okay, Saivite monks, they are called uh, this Nayanars, 63 in number. And all wars there, so they belong to Vaishnavism like that. So here, so Astabhuja Narayana Swami temple that was also a developer like that we can say. Then, not only this, okay, Navabrahma temples, Navabrahma temples they were also developed. Navabrahma temples, Navabrahma temple that was also Hariti temple. So, goddess of children, Hariti, this Hariti temple that is goddess of children like that it was said. Hariti temple that was established. Okay, so Navagraha temples they were also established. Kubera temple that was developed. Kubera. Kubera temple that was also developed in the period of. So, this one. Kubera temple. Okay. Like that, number of temples came into force. Mainly temple architecture that developed, especially according to Vastu. Okay. Temple architecture that developed according to Vastu. So, these temples were established according to Vastu. Temples were established. Temples were established. Temples were established having the sense according to Vastu. According to Vastu. Okay, according to Vastu only, this temple architecture that developed. Vastu. Okay. Previously, it was not like that. Suppose if you see Shadavana's period, Chetur district, Gudimalam, oldest temple, that Shiva temple that existed, it was not built according to Vastu, but later modern period, according to Vastu only, that was developed. Because when devotees, they started moving to that temple, automatically, they expanded the things and according to Vastu only, that was all established by using all the uh, stones, etc. Right like that. So temples were established according to us. So first, they used to establish Garbhagraha. So this Garbhagraha we are calling where the statue is kept. Garbhagraha. Some gap is given and they used to establish Antaralam. Antaralam. Antaralam that was established. After that, they gave some gap and Mandapam was established. Mandapam. Okay, Mandapam. Devotees, they will stand there in Mandapam. And after that, Dvajasthambam, that was established. Dvajasthambam. Dvajasthambam, that was also established by them. Then Balipitam was established. Balipitam, like that. So here, according to Vasu only, what happened? They established all this like that, it was said. Okay, first one Garbhagraha, we can say. Second one Antaralam, then Mandapam. The Jastambam, like that Balipetam, all these were systematically established in this period that all continued well. So, temple architecture that developed in the period of Yehuvala Shantamula, that you have to remember. Yehuvala Shantamula's period, so that went well. He was very secular in nature, like that it was said, and he was also a good administrator. Like father, he also continued the same activities. But temple architecture, that went well. Jainism that also continued, Buddhism also continued in the period of this one, right? So after him only, the last ruler who came to power was Rudra Purusha Dhatta, the fourth one in this dynasty. Rudra Purusha Dhatta, 
Rudra Purusha Datta was the fourth one and the last one in this dynasty. Even though he was capable of doing things, but circumstances so did not cooperate. Circumstances did not cooperate this man to administer things well. He was capable, but circumstances also must be good. Okay, then only it is possible to continue. Otherwise, uh, it is not possible. So, like that Rudra Purushadatta's period, he wanted to bring back past glory too. So, this Ikshwaku dynasty. Whatever the things previously, Veera Purushadatta's period, Yahuala days, uh, so uh, Shantamula once period, Things went well. He wanted to bring back those conditions, but what happened? So he didn't. Okay. So like that, Rudra Prasadatta was the last ruler in this dynasty. He was the last ruler in this dynasty. In this dynasty, according to inscriptions, it is according to, according to, according to what in this sense? According to inscriptions. According to inscriptions. According to what in this sense? According to inscriptions only. Last ruler in this dynasty, according to inscriptions. So that is Rudra Purusha Datta. Because inscription said that there are only four rulers. Okay, there are only how many rulers? Four rulers. They are there like that. It said that's why Rudra Purusha Datta was the last ruler. At last, what happened? He was defeated in the hands of Pallava ruler, so Simhavarma. Okay, he was defeated in the hands of, he was, he was defeated in the hands of, in the hands of, in the hands of Pallava ruler Simha Verma, in the hands of Pallava ruler, Pallava ruler Simha Verma, Simha Verma, with that only this dynasty, so that was ended. Okay. This dynasty, what happened that came to end. Coming to the administration like Shatavahanas, so they divided the kingdom into state Rastra. Rastra Adipati was the head, otherwise Amatya or Mahamatya like that, they used to call. Okay, coming to the, so there is especially, so the administration if you see, so this Sekshwaku, Shatavahanas in their ruling style, so they divided the kingdom into state. State is called Rastra, this state is called Rastra, like that it was said. Rastra. So then Vishaya. Vishaya, like that they also. Then last one, Grama. So like that. So there were the divisions in the administration. Rastra, Vishaya. Otherwise Vishaya, that is also Pranta, like that they called. Got idea? So like that. So things what happened in the sense went well in the period of. So this one. Okay. So all these things. Eh? went on well. So then we can see, so there is Rastram, Grama, mainly what happened, Rastra. Rastra that was headed by Amatya, otherwise Rastra Adipati. Okay, or we can say, so there is, so first unit in the administration, first division we can say. So last one in the administration is Gramam, last unit in the administration. This is the last unit in the in the administration, that is administration like that it was said. Last unit in the administration, that is Gramam Rastra, that is a state. Rastram indicates a state, we can say. State is headed by Rastra Adipati, otherwise Amatyas, Mahamatyas, different names they are there to this one. Then judiciary, that also existed well in this period, Dharmasanas, judiciary that is called Dharmasanas. Judges, same name, they continued. Okay, Dharmasanas, like that they used to call. Dharmasanas. Dharmasanas, like that, it was all said. Okay, so then to assist the king officers, they existed in every department especially because it is not possible king, possible for the king to administer each and everything that's why. So there must be some attenders or assistants, they are called officers. So then officers, they were extending cooperation. So previously what happened, so there's Nakarams we can say, Nakaram. So Nakaram in the sense one of the guilds like that. So some officers, otherwise, so here, so this Gahapatas we can say. So these officers are called Gahapatas. Gahapatas like that it was said. Tax system almost one and the same we can say. 
tax system that is under the same. So Bali Bhaga, Bhaga or Demaya that is the tax collected by these people also. Bhaga, we can say otherwise it was also called Deyameya. Bhaga or Deyameya. Same coins they existed in the period of this when Suvarna is a gold coin, Karshapana is a silver coin. Same coins, if you see the coins also, Satavana's period, whatever the coins existed. One is Suvarna and one is Karshapana. Shivarna, Karsabana, they were the coins. Shivarna is a gold coin, Karsabana that is silver coin, they continued. So taxes, Bhaga, otherwise Deyameya, like that we can say. Bhaga we can say, otherwise that is also called Deyameya. Then military system, so that also continued well. Military system, if you see, so military, good military that existed, Chaturanga Bala that continued, even in this period also, like that we can say. So military force, if you see, Okay, so military forces, four forces they existed in the military. Four forces, we can say. One is, uh, so infantry, cavalry, elephantry, chariots. But uh, chariots did not play that much important role. Elephantry also did not play that much important role, right? So four forces they existed in this. Permanent army that was called Katakam. Permanent army that was called Katakam. Temporary army that was called Skandavara. The same uh, names they continued. Then Viragal Puja, just now we have seen. Viragal Puja indicates the soldiers, uh, when they die in the battlefield, the tombs are established uh, to them and started worshipping the tombs. Vilinjay Sarantai, Viragal Puja, Napadu, Mari Vidamlo, Maraninchana Variki, Samadhu Kati, Mari Pujinja Badadini, Viragal Puja, and Jepesanaru. This is Vilakalam Lone Konsagindi. Viragal Puja. So, this is continued in the period of this film. Viragal tradition and Naru Leda, Viragal Puja and Jepesi Perkunatlaga, Telisandila, Mari, all these important things went well in the period of this Ekshwaku dynasty period. Lone, even Ni and Jepes and Tunam. Mari, economic conditions law, agriculture on the other Kanga trade and commerce on the agriculture that went well. Agriculture is automatically went well. One six tax that also collected. So agriculture that is the main source of income. That is the main source of main source of income. That is agriculture and Japanam. All crops are known to these people. Any crops could have tell soon Japanese. Agriculture is Baga developed. Okay. So then trade and commerce also developed in Japan. One sixth tax no pages. How much tax was paid means one sixth tax. Trade and commerce that is carried on with Rome, Java, Malaya, Sumatra. I think Rome took on the vapor all the garden jirgindi. Rome to you mean that trade and commerce that is declined a little bit. A little bit Rome. With Rome what happened? A little bit declined. A little bit declined in Japan. Kani konasagada mani jirgindi. Rome to konasagindi. Java, Malaya, Sumatra. Java, Malaya, Sumatra. And Sri Lankan Islands, so, and Sri Lanka, and Japanam. The coins of these Roman coins, they are called Dinara Mashakas. Roman coins were called during that time. These Roman coins were called, Roman coins are called, have in the sense, they are called Dinara Mashakas. These Dinara Mashakas, Dinara Mashakas, they are found at Nagarjuna Konda. Amaravati regions. These Roman coins were found at Dinara Mashakas were found at Naga Janakonda and Amaravati regions. Okay, Dinara Mashakas. Roman gold coins were called. Roman gold coins. Roman gold coins were called. Were called. Okay, Roman gold coins were called Dinara Mashakas. Dinara Mashakas. Mashakas. Okay, found at found. Okay. So there is found at Nagarjana Konda region, Amaravati region. Found at Nagarjuna Konda and Amaravati regions like that it was said. Nagarjuna Konda. Nagarjuna Konda. And Amaravati regions. And Amaravati. Regions, Amaravati regions only they were found like that. It was said. Nagarjuna Konda and Amaravati regions. 
this dinar mashakas they were found dinar mashakas they are the so these roman gold coins we can say trade and commerce continued with them they exported spices okay cotton cloth that was exported by them gems and jewelry that also exported by these people spices what are the exports of these people if you see the exports of these people the exports okay exports of these people if you see spices were exported by them spices cotton cloth that was also exported cotton cloth that was exported by them like that it was said and gems and jewelry they were also exported by them gems and jewelry okay so there is gems and jewelry gems and jewelry we can see all these were then coming to imports if you see what imports are there in the period of so this one imports we see the imports gold and silver that was imported by these people one is gold and one is silver gold and silver that was imported by these people okay so like that anyhow ekshogas period went well coming to this agriculture coming to agriculture all crops are known to these people so all the crops they are known to these people like that it was as said okay coconuts are abundantly produced by them at the same time paddy wheat barley all these crops are known to these people they domesticated all the animals cattle so cattle wealth that also existed so in every aspect what happened ekshogas period so went well like that we can say the period of ekshogas okay language and literature so prakrit language developed and sanskrit also existed so like that it was said prakrit language that continued prakrit language prakrit language that continued so this prakrit language that continued at the same time sanskrit also entered sanskrit also existed this sanskrit also sanskrit also existed okay sanskrit also we can argue that prakrit developed under the reason because epigraphs were written in prakrit language only sanskrit overtook prakrit as royal language in 4th so century ad so this uh, so like this all these important things went well in the period of this ikshvaku dynasty like that we can say ikshvaku dynasty period if you see so all these uh, things they happened so the exports they are good imports they are good and uh, coming to conditions if you see social conditions so people are happy chatravarna system that existed in this chatravarna brahmana kshatriya vaishya sudra brahmin community people they thought themselves they are superior they are completely superior in the society like that they people they thought anyhow so the sanskrit that was spoken by them prakrit also used to so there is uh, so there is uh, spoken by them like that we can say right all these important things uh, if we see that okay if we see that things went well in the period of okay this one junagadh inscription junagadh inscription given by rudradama so this rudradama did not belong to ikshvakus okay rudradama so this uh, belong to this rudradama rudradama belong to this one belonged okay sakas we can say belong to sakas okay he belongs to sakas kardamaka dynasty kardamaka dynasty kardamaka dynasty belong to which dynasty kardamaka dynasty like that it was the first one in india to give sanskrit inscription that is junagadh this junagadh inscription is also called girnar junagadh inscription junagar inscription or junagadh like that we can say this junagadh or junagar inscription so is the first sanskrit inscription first sanskrit inscription first sanskrit inscription like that it was said which is the first sanskrit inscription that you have to suppose if uh, which is the first telugu inscription then you can say that kalamalla kalamalla that was given by renati choda sula dhanunjay varma so that is the first telugu inscription first telugu newspaper satyadutta ballari christian missionary association published that newspaper you have to remember first 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 okay first telugu newspaper 
ఫస్ట్ తెలుగు న్యూస్ పేపర్ సత్యదూత ఫస్ట్ తెలుగు ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ కలమళ్ళ కలమళ్ళ ఇస్ అ ఫస్ట్ తెలుగు ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ లైక్ దాట్ సో వీ కెన్ సే రైట్ బట్ జునాగఢ్ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ ఈజ్ అ ఫస్ట్ సాంస్క్రిట్ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ ఇండియా దిస్ జునాగఢ్ ఈజ్ ఆల్సో కాల్డ్ గిర్నార్ ఓకే ఇట్ ఈస్ ఆల్సో కాల్డ్ హౌ గిర్నార్ ఇక్షాకస్ వర్ ద ఫస్ట్ రాయల్స్ టు హ్యావ్ రివైవ్డ్ సాంస్క్రిట్ సాంస్క్రిట్ ఆల్సో డెవలప్డ్ ఇన్ ద పీరియడ్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ వెన్ లైక్ దిస్ ఇక్షాకస్ పీరియడ్ వాట్ హ్యాపెన్ వెంట్ వెల్ లైక్ దట్ వీ కెన్ సై టూ మోర్ శ్రేణి జాయింట్ దిస్ వెన్ మెయిన్లీ వీ హ్యావ్ టు రిమెంబర్ వాట్ ఈస్ మెంట్ బై వీరగల్ పూజ వీరగల్ పూజ ఇండికేట్స్ వాట్ ఇన్ ద సెన్స్ వీరగల్ పూజ సేస్ దాట్ ఓకే టు ద డెడ్ సోల్జర్స్ దే యూజ్ టు ఎస్టాబ్లిష్ టూమ్స్ అండ్ దే యూజ్ టు వర్షిప్ ద టూమ్స్ ఆఫ్ డెడ్ సోల్జర్స్ దట్ ఈస్ వీరగల్ పూజ ఓకే లైక్ దాట్ దట్స్ ఆల్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ వన్ యూ హ్యావ్ టు రిమెంబర్ ఓకే దెన్ రైటింగ్స్ ఆఫ్ సో దిస్ బుద్ధిస్ట్ మాస్టర్స్ బుద్ధ ఘోష ఓకే సో భావివేక ఆర్యదేవ ధర్మకీర్తి సో ఆల్ దీస్ రోడ్ టైమ్ బుక్స్ చుళ్ళ వగ్గ విశుద్ధి మాగా దివర్ద బుక్స్ రిటర్న్ బాయ్ దిస్ ఫెన్ బుద్ధ ఘోష బుద్ధ ఘోష బిలాంగ్ టు గుంటూర్ డిస్టిక్ నెమలిపురి అండ్ ఈ వెంట టు శ్రీలంక లర్న్ సో మెనీ థింగ్స్ హీ లర్న్ సో మెనీ థింగ్ లైక్ దాట్ ఇట్ వాస్ సాడ్ బుద్ధ ఘోష రోడ్ ద బుక్ ఓకే చుళ్ళ వగ్గ విశుద్ధి మాగా చుళ్ళ వగ్గ చుళ్ళ వగ్గ అండ్ విశుద్ధి మాగా విశుద్ధి చుళ్ళ వగ్గ అండ్ విశుద్ధి మాగా వికెన్సి భావివేక ఇస్ ఆల్సో వన్ ఆఫ్ ద ఇంపార్టెంట్ మ్యాన్ ఆర్యదేవ ధర్మకీర్తి వాజ్ ద లాస్ట్ మ్యాన్ సో హూ ప్రాపగేటెడ్ బుద్ధిజం సో ఇన్ ఇండియా ధర్మకీర్తి వాజ్ ద లాస్ట్ వన్ లాస్ట్ వన్ టు ప్రాపగేట్ టు ప్రాపగేట్ బుద్ధిజం to propagate buddhism okay so like that things went well in the period of this when that you have to remember position of woman it went well okay position of woman what happened because they used to get the titles even woman so they is commander's wife or so noble class especially amatya mahamatya like that the woman used to participate in all activities and they also got titles ఓకే మహాభోజకి మహా సో ద ఇస్ భోజకి లైక్ దాట్ ఉమెన్స్ కండిషన్ దాట్ వెంట్ వెల్ లైక్ దాట్ ఇట్ వాస్ సైడ్ ఓకే సో ద ఇస్ ద శాంతిశ్రీ ఉపాసిక బోధిశ్రీ ఆల్రెడీ ఐ హ్యావ్ సీన్ రుద్ర భట్టారిక ఓకే సో ద ఇస్ కొడబలి శేరి ఆల్ దీస్ రుద్ర భట్టారిక షి వాజ్ ద వైఫ్ ఆఫ్ వీర పురుషదత్త రుద్ర భట్టారిక కొడబలి శిరి Kodabali Shiri is daughter of Veera Purusha Tattva. Kodabali Shiri also contributed money for Buddhism. Kodabali Shiri. So this Kodabali Shiri is daughter of daughter of Veera Purusha Tattva. Veera Purusha Tattva like that it was said. Kodabali Shiri. Rudra Bhattarika, wife of Savino Ikshwaku dynasty, greatest ruler. Upasika Bodhisri. this supasika bodhisri what happened lived in the court of upasika bodhisri not lived she was the richest woman lived during the period of vira purusha datta upasika bodhisri is the daughter of a rich merchant revanta revanta belong to amaravati then this woman established many chaityas viharas and mandapas etc in nagarjuna konda chula damma giri near the place chula damma giri and at many other places also she established chaityas and vihara supasika bodhisri shanti sri the shanti sri she was aunt of this veera purushottam or so sister of shantamula 1 sister of shantamula 1 shantamula sister of shantamula 1 like that it was said he had two sisters shantamula 1 one is shanti sri and one is harmya sri these two are the sisters of this when that you have to remember then upasika bodhisri already we know upasika bodhisri what happened she was daughter in law daughter in law bodhi sharma who was bodhi sharma bodhi sharma worked in the court of veera purushottam like this so all these important points you have to remember in this okay shaiva and vaishnava phase they continued already we know temple structure that came according to vastu according to vastu only temple architecture that developed like that it was said so shaivism that continued vaishnavism also 
continued in this period. Already I told you, Saivism indicates people who starts worshipping Lord Shiva, they are called Saivites. People who starts worshipping Lord Vishnu, they are called Vaishnavite. So, but Tikkana said that both are. Okay. Sivayam Vishnuvaya. Okay. So, there is, a, so especially Shiva and Vishnu not different like that it was said. Okay. Like that, so there is a temple structures they developed, I told you, according to Vastu only. Nodakeshwara temple, that is also one. Hariti temple, Prashwabhadra Swami temple, Kumara Swami temple that was established by first ruler only. So there is Nodakeshwara temple, that is also a temple. Hariti temple, that is one. Prashwabhadra Swami temple. Prashwabhadra Swami temple, that is Shiva temple. That is Shiva temple. Pushpavadra Swami temple is a Shiva temple like that it was said. So this Pushpavadra Swami, Hariti temple, goddess of children. Hariti temple, okay. Goddess of children like that it was said. Goddess of children. Goddess of children like that it was said, okay. So then Pushpavadra temple, Pushpavadra Swami temple is a Shiva temple. It is a so, Shiva temple, Pushpa Bhadra Swami temple, that is Shiva temple. So, like that, so Kumara Swami temple, all these temples, they are established in the period of, so these people like that, it was said. So, then Viragal tradition that continued Buddhism, Jainism, sculpture, all uh, were under the same. Mandata statue, I told you. So, Viragal tradition indicates whenever soldiers, okay, whenever soldiers die, Automatically what happened, so the tombs were established and they worshipped the tombs. That is uh, so called Viragal Puja. Buddhism, golden age for Buddhism we are calling. Golden age. Golden age for Buddhism. Golden age for Buddhism like that. It was said. Golden age for Buddhism. Viragal tradition, worshipping tombs of dead soldiers. Worshipping the tombs, worshipping the tombs of dead soldiers, that is called Viragal Puja. Jainism continued, sculpture, so this sculpture did not develop that much, only few architectures. Pushpa Bhadra Swami Temple, Astabhuja Narayana Swami Temple, Nodakeshwara Temple, Hariti Temple, like that, few only. Mandata sculpture, that was found there at Jagai Peta, you know well. It was found. It said about the qualities of a king. It said about the qualities of a king like that, we can see. So like this, all these important bonds you have to remember. So in this especially Ikshwaku dynasty. So how many questions we are going to get from Ikshwakus? Previously, whose period is called Golden Age for? So this Buddhism question that was asked. It is in the period of Veera Purushadatta only. So this especially Mudubastupa system entered in the period of Veera Pushadatta, otherwise sometimes Ikshwaku is like that. It was given. Answer is given as Ikshwaku dynasty, Nalamba dynasty. So Pallava dynasty, like the dynasties, they are asked. That's why you have to remember. So all these important points in this one. Okay. So Ikshwaku, sometimes one question may be asked. Sometimes two questions also asked from this a topic. So anyhow, we can expect two questions from this Ikshwaku dynasty, right? Thank you. Hi friends, we can see one of the important areas that is Ikshwaku dynasty. Ikshwaku, Amshamun Japesi Antunam. Ikshwakus. After the decline of Shatavahanas, this Ikshwakus came to power. Ikshwaku lo Rajani Paripala Chisnit Lagatilisundi. Shatavahanula Patanantaram, Rajapala Chisna Valu Ikshwakulu. This Ikshwakus, they were also called. Vijayapurishas, because Vijayapuri became the capital, that's why they are called Vijayapurishas. Vijayapurishulu Nikuda Annaru. Villa Kalim Lo, Sri Parvatam that was called, okay, Sri Parvatam and Japesi and Yanam. So that developed well.
Nagarjuna Konda and Jepesana, that advanced well, Sri Parvatan. That's why they were also called Sri Parvatiyas and Ikuda Naru. So, Nagarjuna Konda is Sri Parvatamani Peru. In Nagarjuna Konda, Sri Parvatamani and Napudu, Marivilanu, Sri Parvatiyas and Ikuda Naru. Adere Kanga Marivilanu, Ikshwakus and Ikuda, Anat Lagatilisundi. Anyhow, capital is Vijayapuri. The Prakrit language and Sanskrit language both advanced in the period of this Ikshwaku dynasty. So, according to inscriptions, there are only four rulers. According to inscriptions, there are only four rulers. According to inscriptions, if you see, four rulers are there in this Ikshwaku dynasty. Lo, four rulers are there in this According to Puranas, if you see, seven rulers are there like that. It is said. According to so, in this Ekshwakus, according to inscriptions, according to inscriptions, according to inscriptions, there are, so there is, there are four rulers. There are four rulers in Japan, see, and now. Yandamandhi palakulunna arantai, nalaguru palakulunna atlaga thilisundi. So, first one, Vasisti Putra Sri Shantamula. First one, Mary Jusnet like Vasisti Putra. Vasisti Putra. Vasisti Putra, Sri Shanta Mula. Sri Shanta Mula and Japesi and to Nam. He was the first one. Otherwise, he was called Shanta Mula 1. Itadi Kemani and Naru, Shanta Mula 1 and he, Pilchinet Laga Tilsundi. Or he was called Shanta Mula 1 and he and Nam. He was called Shanta Mula 1 and he. Ledak Shanta Mulani Ala Pruda Nirindi. Second one was Veera Purusha Datta. Veera Purusha. So this Veera Purusha Datta, he was the second one in this dynasty. Third one, Marijus Nidlaite. So this Yehuvala Shanta Mula. Yehuvala. Yehuvala Shanta Mula. Yehuvala Shanta Mula, he was the third ruler. According to inscriptions. And fourth one, Rudra Purusha Datta. So, like that. So, four rulers, they administered this one. Purusha Datta. Rudra Purusha Datta Netanu. Palan Chase Netlagatis. Got idea? According to inscription. Manam inscriptions Adharanga Matrame, Nalguru Palakal Matrame, Chodamani Jerkindi. Purana Lemo, Yenimi Yedumundi, any Perkuna. Purana said that. So, there are eight, uh, seven rulers. Puranas Prakarangamari, seven rulers and now we are not going to see. So uh, there is the seven rulers. We are going to see only four rulers because they are only important. Gurthundamari, so like that, Samari Tusnet Laitai. Then, who was the founder of, so there is especially the Ikshwaku dynasty in airport Chisna, Mottamadri Vada Vasisti Putra, Sri Shantamulani, Leda Atanike, Shantamuluduani, Peranatlaka Tilisundi, Shantamula one Ani Anam. He was also called Shantamula one. He was called Shantamula one. Shantamula. Okay, you can write M O R M U. Shantamula one and Japesi, Perkunatlaka Tilisundi. Symbol of this one, lion became the symbol. Okay, so there is Harati Putrasani Leda Sri Parvati Asanu. So just now we have seen Sri Parvatam that advanced well. Nagarjuna Konda is called Sri Parvatam. This Nagarjuna Konda that was called. This Nagarjuna Konda. Nagarjuna Konda that was called Sri Parvatam. That's why they are called Sri Parvatiyasani. Perkunat laga telisundi. This Sri Parvatam is Nagarjuna Konda. Mari Agna Sri Shadakarni Kalam Logana Jusnet Lathe. Nagarjuna Konda lo ne. Acharya Nagarjuna Kusam, Ashraman Airport to Jesadanam. Either the so this Paravat Ashram that was established like that, it was said. Anyhow, in the period of this Ekshwakus, Ekshwakula Kalam Lomari Jusnet Lathe, lion became their symbol. The languages they continued the same Sanskrit and so at the same time Prakrit languages they continued. So basically, capital is Vijayapuri and Japesantana. That's why only they are also called Vijayapuri Shasani Guda Pilcharu. Vijayapuri became the capital. That's why they were called Vijayapuri Shas. 
ఓకే సో దేస్ వీళ్ళకు మరి ఏమేమి పేర్లు ఉన్నాయి వాట్ ఆర్ ద నేమ్స్ ఫర్ దిస్ ఇక్ష్వాకూస్ ఈ ఇక్ష్వాకూస్ మరి చూసినట్లయితే ఇక్ష్వాకూస్ అని అన్నాం ఈ ఇక్ష్వాకూస్కు ఏమేమి పేర్లు ఉన్నాయి అన్నట్లయితే విజయపురి బికేమ్ ద క్యాపిటల్ దట్స్ బై దే ఆర్ కాల్డ్ విజయపురి షాస్ సో దీస్ పీపుల్ దే ఆర్ కాల్డ్ విజయ పురి షాస్ అని అన్నాం విజయ పురి షాస్ ఓకే పురి షాస్ అని చెప్పేసి పేరు ఉన్నట్లుగా తెలుస్తుంది నాగార్జున కొండ దట్ వాస్ కాల్డ్ శ్రీ పర్వతం హెన్స్ ద వర్ కాల్డ్ శ్రీ పర్వతీ యాస్ ద వర్ కాల్డ్ శ్రీ పర్వతీ యాస్ అని కూడా పేర్కొన్నట్లుగా తెలుస్తుంది శ్రీ పర్వతం ఉంది కాబట్టి శ్రీ పర్వతీ యాస్ అని లేదా ఇక్ష్వాకూస్ అని ఈ పేర్లన్నీ కూడా వీళ్లకు ఉన్నట్లుగా తెలుస్తుంది అని చెప్పేసి ఉన్నాం దాట్స్ వన్ ఆఫ్ ద ఇంపార్టెంట్ పాయింట్స్ సో లయన్ బికేమ్ ద సింబల్ ఆఫ్ దీస్ పీపుల్ లయన్ అఫీషియల్ లాంగ్వేజ్ ఆఫ్ దీస్ పీపుల్ దట్ ఈస్ ప్రోక్రిత్ సాన్స్క్రిట్ ఆల్సో ఎగ్జిస్టెడ్ ఇన్ దిస్ పీరియడ్ లాంగ్వేజ్ మరి చూస్ లాంగ్వేజ్ ప్రోక్రిత్ లాంగ్వేజ్ దట్ కంటిన్యూ అండ్ సాన్స్క్రిట్ ఆల్సో ఎగ్జిస్టెడ్ లైక్ దాట్ ఇట్ వాస్ సెడ్ వీళ్ళ కాలంలో సాంస్కృత భాష కూడా ఉన్నట్లుగా తెలుస్తుంది అన్నాం ప్రోక్రిత్ ఉంది అండ్ సాన్స్క్రిట్ ఆల్సో కంటిన్యూడ్ ఇన్ ద పీరియడ్ ఆఫ్ దీస్ పీపుల్ సాన్స్క్రిట్ కూడా కంటిన్యూ అన్నట్లుగా తెలుస్తుంది ఇలా మరి ఆల్ దీస్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ పాయింట్స్ టు రిమెంబర్ రిలేటెడ్ విత్ దిస్ సో ఇక్ష్వాకూస్ దెన్ వై హ్యావ్ టు సీ వాట్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ సోర్సెస్ ద ఆర్ దే టు నో ద హిస్టరీ ఆఫ్ సో దీస్ పీపుల్ దట్ ఈస్ ఆల్సో ఇంపార్టెంట్ కమింగ్ టు లిజియన్ ఆల్రెడీ సో దే వైష్ణవిజం ఉంది బుద్ధిజం ఉంది బికాస్ సో బుద్ధిజం మరి చూసినట్లయితే ద పీరియడ్ ఆఫ్ దీస్ వన్ ఇక్ష్వాకూస్ పీరియడ్ ఈస్ కాల్డ్ గోల్డెన్ ఏజ్ ఫర్ బుద్ధిజం వీర పురుష దత్తాస్ పీరియడ్ ఈస్ కాల్డ్ వీర పురుష దత్తాస్ పీరియడ్ ఈస్ కాల్డ్ గోల్డెన్ ఏజ్ ఏమని అన్నారంటే గోల్డెన్ ఏజ్ ఫర్ బుద్ధిజం అని చెప్పేసి పేర్కొనడం అనేది జరిగింది అని అన్నాం ఇక సో వీళ్ళ గురించి తెలియజేయడానికి ఉన్నటువంటి ఆధారాలు ఏంటి వాట్ ఆర్ ద సోర్సెస్ టు నో ద హిస్టరీ ఆఫ్ దీస్ పీపుల్ సోర్సెస్ ఏమున్నాయని చెప్పి చూసినట్లయితే ఎపిగ్రఫ్ ఎపిగ్రాఫ్స్ అన్నాం సో అంటే నాట్ ఓన్లీ దిస్ వన్ సో వాట్ ఇన్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్స్ దే స్పోక్ అబౌట్ దీస్ పీపుల్ వాట్ ఆర్ ద ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్స్ if we see sources inscriptions study of inscriptions is called study of inscriptions is called epigraphy okay study of this study of inscriptions study of inscriptions is called is called epigraphy in emaniyanam ఎపిగ్రఫీ అని చెప్పేసి అన్నాం మరి సో నంబర్ ఆఫ్ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్స్ ఫర్ గివెన్ బై సో దీస్ పీపుల్ వాట్ ఆర్ ద ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్స్ దే ఆర్ గివింగ్ గుడ్ అకౌంట్ అబౌట్ సో దీస్ పీపుల్ ఓకే వాట్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్స్ దే ఆర్ దేర్ నాగార్జున కొండ ఓకే సో దే ఇస్ రామిరెడ్డి పల్లి నాగార్జున కొండ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ నాగార్జున కొండ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ నాగార్జున కొండ అమరావతి ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ అమరావతి ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ రామిరెడ్డిపల్లి ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ రామిరెడ్డిపల్లి రామిరెడ్డిపల్లి ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ అల్లూరు అల్లూరు ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ ఉప్పగొండూరు 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 ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ ఓకే సో దాచేపల్లి ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ దాచేపల్లి ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ దాచేపల్లి ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ కేశానపల్లి ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ కేశానపల్లి కేశానపల్లి ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ ఎట్సెట్రా దివర్ ఆల్ గివింగ్ గుడ్ అకౌంట్ అబౌట్ సో దీస్ పీపుల్ నాగార్జున కొండ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ అమరావతి ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ రామిరెడ్డిపల్లి అల్లూరు ఉప్పగొండూరు దాచేపల్లి కేశానపల్లి సో రెంటాల ఓకే రెంటాలా ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ రెంటాలా ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్ సో ఎట్సెట్రా దే ఆర్ ఆల్ గివింగ్ గుడ్ అకౌంట్ అబౌట్ సో గివింగ్ గుడ్ అకౌంట్ అబౌట్ గివింగ్ గుడ్ అకౌంట్ గివింగ్ గుడ్ అకౌంట్ అబౌట్ దిస్ ఇక్ష్వాకూస్ ఇక్ష్వాకూస్ గట్ ఐడియా లైక్ దాట్ నంబర్ ఆఫ్ సోర్సెస్ దే ఆర్ దేర్ లైక్ దాట్ వీ కెన్ సీ ఇన్ ద పీరియడ్ ఆఫ్ దీస్ పీపుల్ ఎస్పెషలీ సో మెనీ ఇన్స్క్రిప్షన్స్ దే ఆర్ దేర్ 
what are these inscriptions you see once again so these inscriptions if you see the study of inscriptions that is called epigraphy you know well epigraphy okay so epigraphy means study of inscriptions what are the important uh, inscriptions so some inscriptions if you see some inscriptions some inscriptions some inscriptions if you see so here nagarjuna konda amaravati ramiridi palli alluru uppagonduru okay uppagonduru inscription dache palli inscription keshana palli rentala like that number of inscriptions so they are there like that it was said so inscriptions they are so especially they are giving good account about so these people then amaravati inscription that is also one of the important inscriptions like that so there is especially so green stone mandhata sculpture so they are one of the important sculptures like that so it was said mandhata statue said about what that you see okay mandhata statue this mandhata statue was found at statue was found at jagayapeta so mandhata statue was so found at so this mandhata statue was found okay mandhata we are calling this mandhata statue found at jagayapeta jagaya peta jagaya peta like that it was said founded jagaya peta so that was the statue of veera purushadatta he was the greatest ruler among all the rulers of ikshvakus he was the greatest ruler among all the rulers of ikshvakus like that it was said so it was the statue of it was the statue of it was the statue of veer purusha datta veer purusha datta veer purusha datta was the greatest ruler in this dynasty his period is called golden age the period of veer purusha datta that was called golden age he was also called madari putra madari was mother vasishti putra sri shantamala was father so okay like that so veer purusha datta it was the statue of veera purusha datta we can say it said about the qualities of an emperor the statue mandata statue the statue said about the qualities of an emperor how the qualities must be like that beautifully that was carved okay so the statue said about the statue said about the qualities of said about the qualities of an emperor qualities qualities of an emperor qualities of an emperor was said in that okay like that mandata statue that is one of the important one which belong to so this veera purusha datta that you have to so this uh, you have to know so veera purusha datta was the greatest ruler and ruddha purusha datta was the last ruler according to inscriptions according to inscriptions rudra purushadatta he was the last ruler like that it was said got idea so like this you have to remember all these important points in connection with this one ikshvakus okay what are the important sources inscriptions you know what important inscriptions they are there so important inscriptions if you see samaravati nagarjuna konda etc so puranas epigraphs puranas literary sources they are there in connection with this ikshvaku dynasty like that okay what ep- epigraphic evidences they are there puranas you know well literary evidences they are also there epigraphic uh, this sources indicates so this inscriptions just now only we have seen all these important inscriptions namaravati inscription nagarjuna konda jagaya peta ramiridi palli alluru uppagonduru dache palli keshana palli like that many puranas you know well matsya purana so gives good account about this one vishnu purana vayu purana matsya purana like that this puranas they are also astadasha puranas we are calling asta indicates 8 dasha indicates 10 astadasha puranas all did not say something about this one only few puranas spoke about ikshvakus 
in astadash puranas puranas are astadasha astadasha we are calling astra indicates right dasha indicates 10 18 puranas some puranas said about the ekshvakus then literary evidences they are also there to this ekshvaku dynasty where did they come from whether they are the original inhabitants of andhra desh otherwise did they come from different places so like that that is also one of the important things you have to so no so then so their place of origin that we have to as uh, see then which clan they belong so the greatest ruler was veera purushottam vasishti putra shri shantamula he was the first ruler that we can say yehuvala shantamula he was the third ruler rudra purushottam he was the last ruler i told you so according to inscriptions there are four rulers already we wrote first one vasishti putra shri shantamula he was the first ruler in that dynasty vasishti putra shri shantamula he was also called shantamula 1 shantamula 1 second one veera purushottam veera purushottam was the greatest ruler his period is called golden age veera purushottam was also called south indian ashoka veera purushottam was called how he was called south indian south indian ashoka he was called south indian ashoka right so this was his tripatra shri shantamula he was the first one in this dynasty second one is veera purushottam third one ehuvala shantamula not ehuvala ehuvala this ehuvala shantamula shantamula okay rudra purushottam was the last ruler in that dynasty rudra purushottam okay so there is sir rudra purushottam was the last ruler so like that only there are four rulers in this dynasty like that we have so you know well ikshvaku dynasty sort the decline of shatavahana was only they came to power you know well shatavahana's last ruler pulemavi 3 after the decline of that empire ikshvaku dynasty came to power you know well vijayapuri became the capital that's why they were called vijayapuri shas vijayapuri otherwise they were also called sri parvatiyas right lion became the symbol of these people lion that became the symbol the first ruler in this dynasty was his tri putra sri shantamula according to matsya purana it is said that matsya purana says there are seven rulers in this dynasty but inscription said that only four rulers are there in this ikshvaku dynasty different opinions are there whether the localites of fandra or did they come from different place so different opinions they are there okay what opinions are there regarding the coming of so are ikshvakus that you have to see so the people administered krishna godavari river region they people administered krishna godavari river region that was administered by the ikshvakus they administered they administered they administered in the krishna godavari region krishna godavari river region godavari river region krishna godavari river regions were administered by so these people like that it was said okay they administered so there is regions especially so krishna godavari river regions were administered by these people like that it was said different opinions are they regulated by this ikshvaku dynasty ikshvakula gurinchi bhinnamainaatvante abhiprayalu unnai shri ramani vamshaniki chendina vallani shri ramudu ikshvakuni vamshaniki chendina vallani ala kathanam kuda undi ledha ikshu ante charaku gada ani danni adhikara chihnam ga kontha kalam kaligi unnarani andavalla ikshvaku ani peru chindane vaadana kuda mana kanipistundi okay ikshvaku ikshu mean sugar cane that became the symbol of these people that's why they are called ikshvakus like that it was said ikshu indicates ikshu indicates sugar cane sugar cane ikshu indicates what sugar cane that's why so they is begin the symbol in the beginning so that's why they were called they were called ikshvakus but lion that was the symbol of so this when lion was the symbol of this ikshvaku dynasty according to purana so many rulers seven rulers are there according to matsya purana but according to inscriptions there are only four rulers in this dynasty okay
then so this buddha charitra ashwagosha wrote buddha charitra buddha charitra also said about these people ashwagosha said was the deputy in fourth buddhist council so he wrote the book so this buddha charitra buddha charitra also said about these people buddha charitra ashwagosha wrote the book ashwagosha wrote the book buddha charitra buddha charitra this buddha charitra also said about so this ikshwak was like that it is said coming to their coming to so they said especially whether they belong to andhra or they come from so different places different opinions are there what opinions are they related with them that we have to see okay robson buller said that they belong to north india lord sri rama's dynasty they belong to north india lord sri rama belong to ikshwaku dynasty they people came from north india like that it was said by robson and buller vogel said that they people belong to carnatic region gopalachari said that they people belong to tamil nadu and at the same time caldwell said that they are the original inhabitants of andhra only right so like the different opinions are there related with these people like that we can say okay related with this one robson and buller robson and buller they said that ikshwakus belong to north india this ikshwakus belongs to north india lord sri rama's dynasty north india and lord sri rama's dynasty and lord sri rama's dynasty lord sri rama's dynasty like that it was said by whom in the sense it was said by robson and bulev so robson and bulev vogel said that so this vogel said that they people belongs to karnataka so the sekshwakus belongs to karnataka original inhabitants of karnataka migrated to this andhra region like that it was said by whom in the sense it was said by vogel vogel commented like that got idea so then gopalachari said that they people belong to tamil nadu so there is because some places which are related with them may belong to these people like that it was estimated by gopalachari gopalachari said so they people belong to ikshwakus belong to so there is tamil nadu so there is gopalachari said that gopalachari according to gopalachari they people belongs to tamil nadu they people belongs to tamil nadu but caldwell he said that they are the original inhabitants of andhra caldwell caldwell said that they are the original inhabitants of they are the original inhabitants of they are the original inhabitants of inhabitants of andhra krishna godavari river region that was the place of the sekshwakus like that it was said by caldwell so gopalachari said that they people belong to this one but anyhow so guntur prakasham nellur some parts of kadapa region all these were administered by so the sekshwakus like that it was said okay they administered all these regions so guntur region prakasham region okay so this prakasham region nellu region kadapa region so etc kadapa etc regions etc they were administered by this ikshwakus like that it was said because this vijapuri comes there in guntur district only nagarjuna konda you know well so that's why they are called sri parvatiyas nagarjuna konda was called sri parvatam that's why they are called sri parvatiyas villani emuni annaru sri parvatam ani anna nagarjuna konda ku sri parvatam ani peru kabatti sri parvatam anni rangalalo abhiruddhi sadinchadam valla villaku sri parvatiyulu ani peru adhe vidhanga sri ramuni vamshaniki chendra varani ikshwakulu ani ala unnatluga kuda telustundi okay leda vijayapurini kendranga cheskoni paripalinchadam valla they were called vijayapurishas so different names are there to these people so that you have to remember okay then 
According to Matsya Purana said that seven rulers are there. But according to inscriptions, Alluru, Uppagunduru, Tajayapalli, so in the last class,